Flurpcast! In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, you need a big sack to hold all your dice. Because, oh, fuck, there's a lot of dice. And some people on this show hate that. Some people on this show love that. I don't know, probably the guy with the dice bag probably loves it. We're going to talk about Warhammer 40K. We're in a weird time right now. Yes, society, we're in a weird time. Politically, we're in a weird time. More importantly, in the 41st millennium, we're in a weird time. This episode is dropping after pre-orders for the new box set, but before you're going to get it in stores. So I do have from the website that everybody gets access to. We have no special access. Slurpcast has no clout. You know what I mean? Every time we start over, we start from square one. This is on the website. These are the rules. There's no detachments. There's not really any missions. There's no narrative. The basics of the basics. That's fine. Um, And you know... It's the non-lubricated, non-ribbed, non-spermicidal base bog standard rules. That's right. For his pleasure. Uh, the 8th edition rulebook, a great tome. So that is technically current right now with the help of a couple of these books, new shit out there in the Psyche Awakening books. Um, we're going to talk about all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about where we're at in 40K realm as far as what we're into, what we like, what we don't like. Um, I'd like to do, because last time we, we did Blood Bowl. That's another game that has a long history. So Extreme asked for some direction. And uh, he didn't have a PowerPoint, which I was disappointed on, but he did ask for some direction to stay on target. So what I'd like to do, if you guys are cool with it, is start off with our own personal history with the game, where we started um, through where we are now. Then I'd like to talk about the rules of the game. And then even, we're not going to go, we will talk about ninth edition, but there are other videos that are better videos that people that have the full rule book. So go ahead and watch those. Um, Tabletop Minions is a great one. Watch those. Um, Biron's favorites. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Guerrilla Wargaming. Canadian Thumb Ring. Yeah. Uh, CTR. Not Wisconsin Thumb Ring, Canadian Thumb Ring. Oh, CTRs on this one. And uh, those are great videos to watch. So watch those. Those guys do a great job. They have the full rule book. But we're going to talk about ninth edition rules and eighth edition, what we like, what we don't like. And then I'd like to go into a pros and cons like we did for Blood Bowl. I think that's a great approach to lead into the final segment, which will be our ratings. Uh, you guys cool with that? Sure. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, who wants to start? Stream. <laughs> I hate 40K. Yeah. Um, all right. So my history with 40K, I have purchased a lot of 40K stuff. I've attempted to love the game. I played through, I think, two or three different editions uh, sporadically. Um, not really too deep into it. Um, how long ago was that? Do you remember? I think it was sixth and seventh edition, maybe. Okay, so relatively recently. Um, yeah. So I had a pretty good sized orc army, actually several good sized orc armies. They look and, cool. Yeah, I enjoy them. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mike enjoys everybody's armies. <laughs> I wish you bought my Blood Bowl teams for the past, Mike, because now I wish the toxins were still around. I kind of want them again. I, uh, I would love to have them, but yeah. That's a bad move. And we'll, we'll talk about that kind of stuff, too, because Biron accused me of being a hoarder in the Blood Bowl one. It's like, I wish, like, you know how much 40K stuff I, I should have kept? But when you, know, you move a bunch, you're like, well, I don't need the third edition book anymore or whatever. Now it's like, ah, I wish I would have kept the oldest of the old, like Rogue Trader, which I had, you know, just for the old. Anyway, sorry, Extreme. This is the first of many interruptions. Uh, so mostly orcs, but then I also had a Sisters of Battle army for a while. Um, I tried very progressive to... of you. God bless. <laughs> we're all we're all actually kind of connected to that army a little bit. Um, I've got a, a, a by blood connection to that army, which we'll talk about too. Uh, the greatest injury in 40k of all time. Yep. Most of my playing, I tried to focus on the smaller games, the combat patrol um, size games. Uh, because I'm more of a skirmish player than a mass battle game. Um, but uh, I don't 
no, I guess that's really my general history. Most of the other stuff I think we'll get into throughout this episode. What about like way in the past? Because in a our gaming club episode, I I think it was, or maybe Blood Bowl, um, you talked about playing 40k when you were younger. Was that that did that not go anywhere? No, it was. I mean, just such a brief period. It was a 40k club that I got into, and that's how I got into like miniature gaming. But I think I probably played like one or two very small games, like introductory level games, but I never really got into it much. That was when the uh, single pose Gretchen were in the starter, whenever that was. Yeah, sec- second edition. And the orcs were single pose too. Yeah. And the space brains were single pose too. <laughs> and uh, they all great, are again. Great thing about that box <laughs> that um, it came with an orc dreadnought. Everyone slow down though. It's not what you think. It's a cardboard cutout of an orc dreadnought in that edition. So, okay. So then it's um, a, a limited history. You dabbled a bit and uh, we'll talk a little bit about kind of your experience with it. And um, yeah, you know, and I like the game and we'll, that'll, that'll be discussed throughout, but I'm not trying to say Spoilers. What? Spoilers. <laughs> Grognards. <laughs> Cro- Listen, corn cares not from whence the blood flows. Grognards care not from whence the spoilers flow. Okay, we know this. Uh, I don't want to sway anyone. It, you like it or you don't like it, it's totally fine. There's a lot of meat there for it. So um, let's go to beer on them next. Are you, are you above me? I'm kitty corner above. Other way. <laughs> every, every episode. So like you're plugging in a USB cable. It's always wrong. You're there. Yep. Uh, Brian's here. No, Mike's here. Yep. Because he's last. He joined last. Yep. And Dream is here. Yep. So I found the secret is to be the first one to join the meeting because then mm-hmm. everything's the same yep. well Biron's first every time though yeah right. well he's always going to be in the same spot every time so of the three of us whoever's first so would you say to... is, is it too bold to say Biron thinks everything revolves around him doesn't fair. it yeah fair the plan <laughs> the only one who puts the time into editing so i get make a lot of choices <laughs> yeah. I mean, clearly you put a lot of time into it you leave, you leave in everything, and I have to be your yeah. safety net. Oh, can you can you edit out that slur? Yeah, Biron, are you sure you want to use that word? <laughs> As of a few years ago, that's that's it's on the do not injury in Blood Bowl, right? There's something blank injury. Yeah, badly hurt. Yeah, uh, broken skull, fractured skull. Uh, Biron, so what's your history with 40k? My fir- very first introduction was in 1988. I was playing Battletech at a game shop that I don't even remember anymore. Battletech, like real Battletech? No, the 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 number one Grognard game at the right now. Yeah. Battletech, Still is. yeah, right. Hex based yeah. battle game, and I was at the shop and I and I was looking at miniatures on hooks, and I'm I saw this beaky marine, and I'm like, that looks really cool. And then my friend's older brother offered to paint one up for me, and that was my first exposure. I knew nothing. Um, I still have that miniature somewhere. That's awesome. Usually a friend's older brother offers you some kind of controlled substance. Yes. Uh, in this case, they said, hey, man, um, I got a box of RTO ones. You know what that is? Rogue Trader 1, like the first Space Marine SKU number. I got a box in my car. Yeah. You took them up on the offer. Uh, did you play or just collect? I, I only literally bought one miniature because I was playing Battletech at the time. But you So you didn't? Go, like, go anywhere from it? You just the first kinda... time I played a real game of Warhammer 40K was at Crooked Hat Games in, like, 2001, two-ish. Um, and even that, it was barely. I played more Warhammer Fantasy. Hmm. The very first real game I played was probably with you guys. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like, I'd always bought and painted and built stuff, but I'd never actually played until 7th edition. What, uh, I mean, was there, is it, the, I mean, and this is going to come out throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. This is going to be another two-hour one. Uh, but it's, uh, I mean, the, the audience of this game, the players of this game, the worst of the worst that come out with this game, was that the main reason you were like, fuck this? Well, no, it was, I started playing, the first 40K game I played was um, Battlefleet Gothic. Mm, okay. So that was my first foray at actually playing in universe. But then Crooked Hat Games at the time was more of a fantasy shop. That was more, more people played fantasy than 40K at the time. Because did, there, yeah. there were people that played at the shop and most of them were garbage people. Did you run into Papa Nurgle there, the guy? 
No, but uh, Necron Steve is the first right. one I ran into. Was uh, Ass Neck? Was Ass Neck there? Do you know Ass Neck? I, I I know of Net Ass Neck, but I don't know if I know him specifically. Okay, it's a real but, guy. But fun fun fact: Necron Steve would beat all the kids playing Necrons at Todd's shop. Yep. He decided to join our Battlefleet Gothic campaign. I made him quit after one game. Nice. Because his Necron fleet got destroyed by my Tau. He failed his will be back roll, I take it. Well, I said, did you want to brace for impact? Because yeah. they save on anything, but I, you, you, you need a six to hit him. He's like, no, yeah. uh, you won't get many sixes. But I, would, I literally threw a cube of 36 dice at him, and uh, Space Hulk is Tomb World, which he said you- was not in keeping with the lore. Was that your last interaction with Necron Steve? Yes. Mm, okay. <laughs> that was my proudest moment. That okay. one game won me. I didn't win any other game in the campaign. That one game got me second place in the campaign. Wow. So from, from Battlefleet Gothic in like 01 um, till maybe four years ago, mm-hmm. no 40K? No. Wow. I bought the rule books, I bought models, and I bought codexes. But okay. I just never, I just like, uh, too much. When did you start reading the novels? Oh, the novels? Uh, probably around the time The Hat was open, around okay. 2001, so you, 2002. So you got kind of immersed in the lore, just yeah. didn't want to play the game. Yeah. And that's, that's fair. I mean, that's um, extreme. You had a little bit of a dabbling into the lore. You had a, do you have a couple maybe graphic novels? Uh, yeah, a couple of graphic novels. I read all the, the I really liked the sisters. Um, novels and then a couple of the more orc themed novels i really liked but i don't really care for space marines at all so that limits um what you can read in the 40k universe very true it's a it's a gigantic part of everything so yeah it's, but to be fair the first army i had the first exposure to actually buying models and making an army though i never played them was when tau very first came out yeah i bought the hammerhead the devilfish a box of firewaters a box of crew um and whatever uh the crisis suits yeah the stealth guys really the no the, the the standard the crisis suits that kind well, of those like yeah but also they, i really like the stealth guys a lot too. yeah the stealth suits and i and i even bought some recently for uh kill team the stealth nice. i had an entire crude army at one time but uh almost at least 1500 points they're still and, one of my uh, favorite sculpts they've done is just the base crude warrior. Yeah. i will say in the probably Three to four games I played total with them took longer to set up than it did to play the game because I was tabled immediately in those games by two turns. You, you laid out, you put 80 guys out, and then you started taking them off. So one game I had was um, played against an ultra marine player, and he had, um, you know, a well-balanced army of 18 land speeders only. And um, each of those had heavy bolter and assault cannon. So they were all AP4 or five, whatever. Whatever it was, I didn't get a save on anybody. So it was just like, and it was just pulling out like huge amounts of them. The worst part was I bought a games day crew shaper to be like squad leaders for each unit. So those were pretty hard to come by and even more so now. And that was disappointing that it was just, I don't know. But it, it was never meant to be because it, that was really a four funsies army. You, right, you that, that's the problem is like every army starts out and this, this happened with us when we were playing in 7th edition, when we were having fun with that, was you start with a fun theme army, and then you play someone, and you get, you get hosed. You're like, F this. That's so I'm true. You know what? Kind of the same thing. Hold that thought, because that's definitely that's a, a perfect lead into the competitive narrative nature of, like, the yeah. second. That, that, I definitely want to talk about that. So, so yeah, for you, and, and since I moved uh, two years ago, you've played still or not so much? Yeah. I ran a, uh, well, kill, if you count Kill Team, we play that quite a bit. You know, we can sort of count it. I, I want to do a Kill Team episode at some point, though. <laughs> but, uh, I think the last campaign that, that I run, we can't kind of ran together, the Shame Hammer. Shame Hammer was the We last had the, the bonus die. That was kind of fun. Shame Hammer was fun. So people that um, may not follow the, the Biron lore in his, himself, mm-hmm. uh, Biron is a, he is uh, an enema wrapped in a puzzle, if you will. <laughs> not an, Very not capricious. An not an enigma, right? Not an enigma, but he's really an enema. Because if you're doing things wrong, he will let you know. Now, there's a difference, though. If you're at, like, for example, I would be at the old G- a battle bunker in Downers Grove, and someone would come up to me like, <laughs> well, why don't you have three land raiders out there? 
I'm like, I don't know, because I still want to be friends with this guy in two hours from now. That's why. And well, it doesn't make any sense. So Biron will do the opposite. If you're doing something cheesy, he will call you on on it. So this was a campaign where uh, wins and losses mattered, and you built up five combat point or command. Um, no, victory point. Uh, no, the power level. Sorry. Yeah. Too, too many, too many two-letter abbreviations. Power level. Uh, you build a power level after each week, and then um, you would also accrue or lose shame points. I think you let a couple people remove them. Like you probably made them pull their pants down and get paddled or something to remove them, right? Well, there's a, like if you painted a whole unit, you got you could remove a shame point. You could remove one, yeah. Uh, so that was kind of um, you know making people do. You can't run away. Leaders have to fight. You always got to overcharge. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, which, plasma has to be overcharged regardless of if it's the right call. Yeah. Uh, so that was a, a fun, different kind of campaign. Before that, you also helped you and I together. And with Ryan, I would say, probably ran the four, uh, 30K campaign. Yep. We started off 30K, Horse Heresy Kill Team, and then moved up to Combat Patrol. And this probably, is pre-current Kill Team. It was more like modified standard. Yeah, it, it was 7th edition 40K Kill Team, which is basically 7th edition 40K. Just no units. There was yeah, really it's no more like order. combat patrol. Yeah. yeah, but there was just, there was it was the same exact rules as 40k, just no squads. Right, and run, which has its own set of problems because things. I mean, as we know, 40k now, current edition and new edition, it's all about buffs and all about mm -hmm. where you are in relation to units. So that would never fly in the old rules. So I'm very thankful. Kill team is its own thing. I'm thankful. Um, you know, Necromunda is its own thing for a short time. That uh, Shadow War, which was kind of a mixture of both is its own. I, I like that. Apocalypse is its own thing. That's great. 40K to me needs to stay only 40K. Everything else can be derivative of it from a, a lore standpoint, but I love when other rules are there. I don't want 40K rules in other games. It's, it's hard enough with one game to remember everything, not remember all this and then now this. So that's why I like Kill Team is like, oh, it's close. You know, that's what I like about it. So we ran that together and you and I played a bunch in 7th edition, a good amount. We were doing the orcs and gene stealers. Um, I was building up orcs, and you were building up gene stealer cults. And it was like, you got a tank, I got a tank. You got this, I got this. And it was great. It was fun. And, you know, there were times where, you know, I remember that one game you popped up behind me and just wiped out half an army in one turn. It was like a, a mob of 30 pure strain gene stealers charged your, your Gorkonaut. It was a Gorkonaut. It was a battle wagon. There was... 50 orcs. Um, so like they wound on sixes automatically and it was so many yeah. dice. Where... I just didn't have a chance. And I was like, that, well, lesson learned. I'm not going to freak out about it. It's a fucking game. You know, I'm, guess what? Uh, people win battles and people lose battles. That's kind of yeah. how things go. Um, so um, that, that was fun because my opponent was fun. Um, you know, in spite of yourself, Biron, you were fun to play. Uh, <laughs> it's weird. I didn't expect that. I expected to flip a table on you and say, you know what, we're playing for pink slips, entire army swap, something to make <laughs> to up the stakes. But that um, was, the fun part was like, what, what do you buy? Like at the end of the game, you, we'd be looking at the shelves and we'd be eyeing each other like, what are you Oh yeah, I totally hit a DACA jet. I was like, I don't want you to, one, it's awesome. Two, it's a flyer, which Shame Hammer has the thing with flyers too. Yep. So it's like, I wanted that to really be like, no, under the counter, come on. <laughs> So yeah, that was that was fun. Um, and then since then, uh, have you guys dabbled much post Shame Hammer and not Kill Team, or not, not so much? No, I think Shame Hammer was the last 40k real 40k thing we did. You think with ninth you'll do something? Yeah, I want to try out some Combat Patrol. Okay, cool. Well, we'll talk about that. So a big part of the game is how they split up the different ways to play. Mm -hmm. um, it's two different. It's like a big flowchart, you know. And we'll talk about that. Um, Mike. So uh, as the elder statesman. Uh, I don't know if your 40K history goes as far back as Biron, though, even though you your personal history does in on the planet, uh, Terra. I mean, not Earth. Yeah. It's in the lore. Uh, but but did I you also bought a, a couple of minis in the 80s. Didn't yeah. quite fit hex bases. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, really? uh, uh, but I didn't really do anything 40K-wise until, uh, I don't know what edition it was. It was the one with the Dark Eldar. Oh, third. Third, yeah, it was third edition, and I held out for the longest time until they, it was they had this forty k in a flash rule set, which was I remember that that was yeah. was that the white dwarf article about playing on lunch? Yes, yeah. <laughs> like, so I got some stuff bullshit because yeah. 
find a parking space in a, like a mall parking lot. There ain't no way anyone's getting back on time. This is still after work. No one's playing on lunch unless you play in your own office. Like, well, these are, you know, these are Europeans too. So, you know, they oh, have that's to very true. Yeah. It's like, I read these articles like, Oh, play in a lunch hour, like lunch hour. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know what? If I don't get back at, at 30 minutes, Dan and or Gary will consult the handbook and I may get a write up. Uh, so Mike, back then um, you, that was probably like in the day where they had those like the crazy looking chaos, like a chaos Marine would have like tentacles around uh, like a, a weird las cannon. It was like a very much character ish. Yeah. You didn't play a lot of models back in the rogue trader and second edition days. Um, but you collected, you didn't play till third edition then. Well, I only had a few models. Cause I was like, I used to pay, cause I used to paint a lot when you know, I was playing D and D. And then when I got into college, I wasn't playing D and D, but I was like, I like painting. Let's go. I went to a hobby store and just picked up. I, I didn't know what they were, but they, apparently they were noise Marines. Oh, and, nice. uh, uh, that was one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you ever, did you play sci-fi role-playing games or why did you make the jump to 40 K models? No, not, I, I just, it models. looks cool. Okay. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't remember where I got them or anything. I just, they just appeared one day and, uh, but I didn't start playing until third edition and I played orcs cause I didn't care if I won or lost. And so that, you know, that's one of the, joys of being orcs is when stupid stuff happens and sometimes it was more fun to lose and well, so. let's not forget what's the orc uh, battle credo of um if you lose you're dead so and i'm trans it's a poor translation to english by the way or high gothic or whatever it's called um if you lose while well, you're dead so who cares um if you win awesome because winning is great um and if for some reason you lose but don't win you know like you you know fall back and i want to say run away well, then you get to fight again. So it's like win, win, win. Yeah. According to orcs, and I love that. So as a an orc player, you got to have that attitude. And the great thing is, um, people that play orcs most of the time are a, a sporting, fun person. Not all. There's some douchebags, but right. for right. the most part, though, that's one of those tell like those signs. Like, oh, you got orcs. Like this guy's cool. He might bust out a wah a little much here and there, but uh, that's fine. I'm cool with it. Um, but yeah, that makes sense. Um, so then when, cause when we did our blood bowl episode, we talked about the old rules, second edition and before, and then a huge jump to third 40 K didn't have as big of a jump, but that was still the biggest jump in history Yeah. outside of seven to eight, which we'll talk yeah. about, which is the current, one. but two to three, cause two went from that old style where it was just, um, I mean, everybody had movement stats where they went to everybody go six. It was just like, they, they just changed everything in it. And at first it was like, what is this shit? But then it was like, oh, we actually can play a game without, with less arguments and, and, you know, under three hours and those kind of things. So seventh edition or, or third edition was a big change to a lot of uh, 40K players. And one that a lot of people jumped in. That was their first one for a lot of people. Um, that was the first one where one rule book had everything. And then they still had, you know, codices. Mm -hmm. codexes depending on where you're from um they still had those too but you could start playing with that big gray book um, in, in second edition had individual books for like weapons and missions and stats and all that so um since then so that was third edition 40k came out like in uh 97 ish 98 um you yeah, and i, I played start to like oh three yeah maybe yeah but with that one so i think I'm probably foggy on the years, but it's usually like every four or so. Um, so they went when they went to fourth edition, that's when, um, and it's fine that we're talking about it now because you and I, we are, our past with 40K kind of intersects anyway. Um, when fourth edition came out, that was the first hardcover. It had like the hammer logo on it. And um, that was when we kind of did the War Realm stuff. And we started playing at the bunker a lot and weekly games. And um, that was great. And then I think, Fifth edition kind of built on that. And then six kind of got away a little bit, got a little more uh, fiddly, I think. It was like model by model. Like, don't roll all those together. And then someone's probably watching and thinking this guy's stupid. That's fine. I'm, I'm going by memory. I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, but I think that's what happened. Six scared a lot of people off because it was a lot of that weird fiddly shit. Seven scaled it back a little bit. And then it was like, okay, fuck it. Eighth edition, start over. And in fact, not just start over, start with Age of Sigmar. And then start from there. 
and that's kind of how eighth came in. Um, so you and I, you and I played a bunch in the fourth and fifth edition days during the War Realm time, and then later on we played uh, probably fifth or sixth. Uh, it was you, me, Jason, um, one not the, not Paul E. Right, but the other Paul. Yeah, Paul. A couple yeah. other guys. Um, Steve used to play. Greg. But anyway, um, those were like those were the days of 40k where your opponent truly made the game if because the rules weren't the best you were playing the game because you liked 40k and you were biased you wanted to play it but like as a straight game it was like Ugh. but you hoped you had someone fun to play if you got stuck in a tournament or something you might get kind of disgruntled now, is that um with you mike is that what happened because you didn't start 40k up again until we started playing at grognard right yeah yeah were you building death guard like in the background the whole time no 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 i didn't i didn't start that until the eighth came out so oh, okay okay um so you and i took a little bit of a break before we, we played a lot of fantasy between the yeah. sixth or seventh and then up to eighth um so we had that but um yeah so for me um it's basically the you know that 40k and blood bowl were the fir first two miniature games uh another game that my brother dean showed me and i remember this um and he'll, he'll be watching this too i remember like very vividly some of those things and that's just kind of funny that you remember like i don't remember what i ate yesterday but i remember just these these moments in in games and in and in, in, in getting into things but um he tells me about it. i'm like oh that sounds cool um i just kind of like would look at catalogs because remember um in the back of white dwarf they always had a catalog it'd yeah. be like three pages of new models you know metal everything but and the first ones i thought were cool were actually orcs they were like weird boys, mad boys, storm boys. They were, and you know, that's kind of cool. Um, and I didn't buy anything. And then I saw Gene Steelers, not Tyranny, but just straight up Gene. So I'm like, that's kind of cool. Because then I, I was also interested in Space Hulk a little bit too. The first one, I think, is what was out then. So that was kind of, well, I didn't buy anything though. I was just kind of like, ah, just kind of dabbling. Um, then I remember going to, uh, Dean was playing a game against one of his friends. And he went to his house and he invited me over to watch. And I remember they got in a huge argument about rules. It was so funny because then his, his friend's like, you want to get into this fucking game? Like, look what it's doing to us. It's tearing us apart. And I'm like, I want to get in. Like, it was just so funny to watch, like, you know, and they're still friends. They still play games to this day. So there's never long lasting effects. But it was just so funny that, like, they were fighting over rules. Like, I think it was like... Um, uh, the warp spiders can warp, can warp in, shoot you, and then warp up behind, behind the buildings. Like, that's fucking bullshit. I never get a chance. It was like one of those where they have to mean something different. Well, it's written this way. Rules as written, rules as all that kind of stuff. Back then, in like 95, it was going on. So I realized, like, I do want to get into it. I, I think it sounds fun. So I bought uh, the first Chaos Codex ever came out. They never had a Chaos Codex before that. Um, and it's for second edition. Uh, Abaddon's on the cover. It looked awesome. There was like rules there were, i always knew about like the world eaters were corn death guard was nerve i knew that i didn't know about the other ones it was cool to read about those um but it was kind of like a hodgepodge army just pick so i remember painting my first models i got the chaos terminators i painted them black because they were going to be black legion and abaddon's bodyguard i had noise marines which were pink emperor's children i had night lords i had just, it was a mishmash and it was like you know i was 18 whatever meanwhile by the way side note people do soup armies now which it's on purpose to get the best of everything i did it because i was a dumb teenager i didn't know any better I, and you know I, back then they they you didn't have the massive armies you do now you know massive armies and they also they didn't like they didn't um they didn't stress the traitor legions in, in the chaos world they just kind of stressed these are the bad guys so it was the the way the army list was made in that codex it was encouragement to do I had a unit of Death Guard. They were the old plastic one piece yeah. guys. And yeah. it was like, that, that's what they were listed as. There was, you know, Death Guard as an entry, Noise Marines as an entry, Berserkers. And that, as, so they didn't really stress the Legion. It was almost like an afterthought. Um, but I, you know, played that then and played with Dean, played with his buddy, played with um, my friend Paul, a couple other guys um, that I played with back then. And they were fun. The rules were all over the place. They were just insane sometimes, but we had fun building stuff, you know, just getting into it all. Then third edition came out, um, restarted, and I built, um, started working on chaos, but like proper, so Emperor's Children, because they eventually had a chaos codex. 
um, that broke down. That's what it was. That first one, they didn't break down the lead. It was the next one. Whenever third, edition, <laughs> third or fourth came out, that's when they really broke it down and said, Iron Warriors get to take Imperial Guard vehicles and they repurpose them. And then Alpha Legion, they're all secretive. Like they actually gave identity to all nine of them, which was cool. They never did that before. So I went with Emperor's Children and had a mixture of noise Marines, regular Marines, and Demonettes. Um, and that was what I focused on. I built and painted all, you know, pretty much a full army for the first time because I had a direction with it. Um, as time went on, played with, you know, Mike, different people, and as editions went up, every time a new edition came out, I always gave it a try. I always bought the rule book when it came out because I'm like, fresh start. Like, if I left the last version disgruntled for whatever reason, either due to a person, a personality, a rules thing, whatever, it was always a fresh start. And that was kind of cool that you, you had that. Um, people get mad, like, oh, this invalidates my army. But, like, I just like the fresh start. It was always something fresh. Um, over time, I built um, Eldar armies, uh, Space Wolves I really got into a lot. Made a 13th Company army. So it was all mutations, and we were stuck in the Eye of Terror, all that. And... Um, I started working on orcs and um, yeah, and then, you know, obviously Marines, I've went through a bunch of different, I, I started doing, I don't think Mike, you even knew this, but I built during the original War Realm days, my space marine army was the, uh, the Flame Falcons, which was a, a white dwarf article about the cursed founding. They spontaneously combust in battle and I'm like, oh, I got it easy. These guys are fucking awesome. So I bought the Legion of the Damn Shoulder Pads with the flames on them and outfitted them all with that. And it was just great because they were all just, weird shit happens it was like it's a weird table you roll on um but like that was just kind of funny i always liked doing something different i liked you know a, a different space marine kind of army that's why i like 13th company they weren't the norm they weren't the ultramarines that kind of thing um but as time went on just kept playing every edition generally just different people to play with and um also finding new ways to enjoy the game and we'll get into that with the pros and cons but yeah i mean for me it's been 25 year Love hate relationship, rocky road. Um, it's an abusive relationship that I keep coming back to. I tell the police I fell down the stairs. He knows what really happened. What really happened is Huron pulled some shenanigans. You know what I mean? Popped up behind me. Oh, what the fuck? Um, so that's kind of the history of 40K there. Um, let's talk about the rules. I think that it's important that, and this is not the, the show to watch to learn a lot about rules and games. There's plenty of other things out there. But I think um, we've all had this for about a week now. I've played two games with it. And um, let's talk about some of those changes and kind of just uh, where that's going. Eighth edition, total rehaul, uh, uh, overhaul of the game. It was like, I mean, vehicles have wounds. I was, first it was like, what the fuck? This is dumb. I just immediately, because it's not what you're used to. What's my armor to, value, bro? Right, armor in the front side. It's like, well, facing just... No. Yeah, so you, I, 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 I was like, this is bullshit when it first started. I, I, I didn't want to play it. And I was like, well, let's try it. Let's give it a try. Because, um, Biron, we were already playing seventh, a few games. We weren't, by no means were we experts. We played a handful of games. Mm -hmm. We got into seventh late. Because they took seven weeks to play. Yeah, it took a long time to play. Uh, the, the rule book was like in three volumes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and we so, bought Kill Team just to get the mini rule book. Right. Yeah, right. The mini rule book. That was awesome. Yeah. As I got older, I realized that it's not all it's cracked up to be because it's like, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Wait, dis emergency disembark? Is that what it is? So started playing eighth. I was like, holy shit, this is fun. Because now we can just focus on what we're doing and not focusing on missing a rule, catching a rule, gotcha, that kind of stuff. Some may say it was dumbed down. Okay. I, I'm, I'm pretty dumb. Me. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's not an insult to me because I can now think about what I want to do, where I want to deploy, who I want to focus on, as opposed to, wait, I got to remember this shit. So eighth was great. Um, I was excited to hear that ninth is really like an 8.5, really just a tweak of that. Um, that was great to hear. Excited to hear that. Um, I will say this. So again, this is just the one off the website, the basic rules. Um, what I've seen of the new rule book, what's really cool is they took the eighth edition rules, made their tweaks, and then said, you know, we really have to write it for those guys. Tournament players, win at all costs, look at rules lawyers. So what they did was it was really cool. And there's a few examples, I think, even in the basic rules. But they give you the, the rules as bullet points. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, 
If that ain't enough for you, it should be like 90% of the time. But if that ain't enough, then read this. And that's where they say like a little lawyer, lawyery speak about what they really mean there. Just, I love that because I don't want to look through three paragraphs. I just want the rule. Bullet points are great. But then if someone wants to argue the rule, well, then we got the paragraph. It's the perfect solution that I can't believe it took them nine editions to come up with that. But um, they, they also send rules to like tournament people now. They send rules to people. They never did that before. You know, when you look in this book now, it probably says it, maybe not in this one and probably in the, the real book, but, you know, big thanks to blah, blah, blah. Big thanks to the friendly ass grognards for not shitting all over it. Is, is your name in that rule book twice? I wish. <laughs> no, unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not a good enough player to make, make my name in that rule book. Uh, but I love that. So um, in the new rules, um, it is very similar. And by the way, again, if there's something we get wrong, you shouldn't be judging us based on it because who the fuck cares, dude? But post a it. comment because that counts as engagement. Sure, post a comment. Say, you know, um, they are all fucktards. Sure, that's fine. Yeah. It's not the worst thing I've heard today. Um, so it's got some similarities, but then a lot of similarities, but then there's some unique differences on there, the way they word things. Um, so for example, squad coherency is a big one right now. What were people doing when 8th edition came out, different than 7th, 7th and before, wasn't all about auras and how close you are to people. They didn't do that a lot. 8th, because it's based off of Age of Sigmar, yeah. that's who buffs who, and then where do they go in relation to you? What happened? The, con the conga line. It made out. for ridiculous looking scenes of battle. Like, yeah. I remember in when we first started playing Age of Sigmar, when that came out, you were playing the Chaos guys, yeah. and you would have this long line of Chaos warriors just to get within the aura. I was, uh, I was even more of a dick because the Blood Secretor? Yeah, the, the, the banner guy, right? Yeah, um, he was hiding behind a thing. So the conga line went. <laughs> so it stupid. looked like if you were above, it looked like ants at a picnic, you know. Yeah, right. Line. It looked like I was actually giving a signal to, to somebody yeah. up above, you know. Are you trying um, to spell something? Right, yeah. Um, ridiculous, because it's fucking corn, insane cultists that should be always moving forward, axes swinging, ready to kill. What happened? I played against some competitive people. became a marching people. band. That, and when I also played against some competitive people, um, not, you know, people at Grognards. And it was like, well, you said it earlier, Biron. What happens? You go in strong. You go in with fluff. You go in with theme. You go in with lore. Best intentions, yep. Best intentions. You know, I've got the fourth company of this Space Marine chapter. In fact, they're all marked like it. I got all the, 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 the different ranks. And you go in, you get stomped. You go, fuck it. Uh, six Stormhawk Talons. Like, yes. They're games. You get, people get competitive by nature. And it sucks. Like, it sucks that I had to do that with the Blood Reavers. It sucks that I did something similar with Orcs. You know? It's funny. But, was that? It was still funny. <laughs> it's funny, but I, I just, I, I didn't like it. You know, st stay within six of your war boss to get the extra plus one. Well, the war boss should be fighting at the front lines with yes. them. Well, then they don't all get it. So it's very difficult sometimes when you play people that are really trying to win and you have to question your own motives. What are you here to do? Are you here to have fun? Are you here to win? Try to do both. I mean, make a new friend. Make well, an enemy. I mean, those are all things that happen. It's like this. It's, it's like you can go with best intentions of like, I'm doing a lore-heavy army. I'm taking – these guys, they're not as good as these guys, but I like the way they look and this and that. Like, let's say, for instance, um, you and I, one, one of your and I favorite unit is the aggressors, right? Yeah. The bolter aggressors are categorically better than the flamer aggressors yeah. in almost every aspect. But I play salamanders, so I want to do the flame aggressors. Yeah. But if I try to stick to that lore, I don't mind losing, but it's like if you don't play like your opponent plays, you might just get just trounced. Yeah, and on that same note, so let's look at my situation. I play Raven Guard. They're supposed to be secretive, uh, yeah. special operatives. A giant Gravis suit that's clunking around doesn't really fit it. But they're too. But they're going to ambush with that motherfucker, is what they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, they pop and in nine inches. They pop in nine inches away. I got uh, two. 
All right, all bullshit aside, let's talk rules. There are other videos to watch if you want like the real rules. You know, like the good shows that got pre-release copies of the full box, not just print off a PDF, but this is what I got. This is what we talk about. So taking the eighth edition rules and then making a 8.5 was great because now it was clearing things up. They actually took feedback from gaming groups and from tournament players and sent them to them to get their info. So when you look at a rule, it's got the bullet points, great. And then if someone wants to argue that, cool, I got a paragraph too, motherfucker. So you cool with that? All right. Bullet points are going to be great 90% of the time, but you're going to want to have a little bit of detail when needed. Now, when it comes to the rules themselves, um, you know, moving is the same kind of thing. No issue there. Um, for the most part, shooting is the same. They did say that you can shoot, if you're a vehicle or monster, you can shoot in combat. That's awesome. You know, not a blast weapon, but everything else, it's great. Um, in 8th edition, you can shoot pistols in combat anyway, but that was the only one. Um, I do want to mention the squad coherency rule because that's a big change. Forever, like since I can remember 40K, it's like uh, a model two inches away from another model. Cool. Then you can like space them out. You can put bunch them up, whatever. In 7th edition and previous, you saw people have blobs of, of models because that's kind of the game, blobs, you know? strategically placed blobs, but blobs nonetheless. Eighth edition comes out based off of Age of Sigmar, and now it's all about buff auras or people around. And so to maximize your distance, you do the conga line. 30 orcs, war boss here, banner here, we're good. And they wanted to change that in this one. So they said, now, if you got a big unit, that's what she said, uh, if you got a big unit, more than six or six or more models, they got to be within two inches of two models. Cool. So you pull off casualties, you know, be smart about that. You know, you have to both be conscious of pulling off good guys, like heavy weapons and characters or leaders, and then also where they are. Because at the end of the morale phase, you're going to pull off any models that aren't within two inches of two other models. So if you do the dog bone formation, talking about two on the end, two on the end, and a line in the middle, one guy goes off the dog bone, gets the morale phase. Based on the rules, you're pulling off every single model because each time you look at it, pull one off, he's not next to two. Pull one off, he's not next to two. Now, someone may, might argue, well, you're only going to lose one because that's the phase. It's happened. Like, at this exact moment, pull off all models that aren't coherent. <laughs> Done. Well, so they'll have to rule on that one. Hopefully, there's a day one FAQ that says, can they, they should result in more. Otherwise, it's a flawed way to fix the system. If you're trying to encourage blobs and two ranks minimum, don't let people pull off one model and say, okay, like, your move. Uh, so that's a big one, coherency. Uh, also, five inches up. So two away and five up is the other one. Yeah. Um, some of the other major ones uh, in combat, chargers still go first. That's great, still there. But then it used to go to all the charges go first, and then whoever's turn it was takes the first one, and you alternate. Now it's the opponent takes the first one. After chargers, but then it's my turn. I like that. A little more engaging rather than see that freebie you get. Like you already get all the chargers, and then you want that one too. Um, that's kind of cool because let's say you have an awesome charge on your turn. Boom. You wail on everybody. You get to go first. Cool. Then when it gets to your turn, or that's on your turn, then your opponent's turn if there's no other chargers, hey, let's do them again. It's a cool way to like reward chargers by fighting first the next phase, if you choose to pick that. So I kind of like that one too. Um, outside of that, I mean, th those were the big ones. Um, they, they better defined who can fight. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we were just talking about that. All right, so this is um, the who can fight thing is, I mean, I can't remember an addition of 40K when arguments didn't occur in close combat. Like, it's never not been an issue. There's always a fucking thing about it. So when it went to 8th edition, again, basing off Age of Sigmar for the most part, some differences, you know, you, you got a guy in combat and then you can like, well, um, who can fight? It used to be people within an inch and then an inch from who's within an inch and all that. And then you pile in, 
You got to move closer to that enemy, the same one. Okay, but it doesn't mean where. Like, I don't have to go like that. I can go like this. So they kept that, which is cool. Give you some maneuverability. Once you get base to base, then you're stuck, but that was cool. But what they said was, now who could fight? Um, I'll explain the rule, and I'll, and I'll tell you kind of why I like it. Now the rule is models within engagement range, and engagement range is defined as one inch away from the enemy. Cool. Easy, right? Anyone, no one doesn't get that. Like, that, I mean, everyone knows whether you got like a, a little widget or whatever, like one inch away is engagement range. Easy. Everyone gets that. Then they said, also, remember we talked about two, two ranks, trying to get the blobs going? So you, you pile in. Then people that are within half an inch, not an inch, half an inch of models, friendly models, that are also within half an inch of the enemy. This sounds very complex, but it's not. And I, I love the way they did it because it's encouraging you to get closer and closer. Because if you always stay an inch apart, you're never going to get row two to fight. So if you inch forward and pile in, even just like, you know, slide in, now there's a reason to get within a half inch. The other reason why I like this, I think it'll help people bitching about base sizes. Um, base size is a big thing in 40K. It's not the one, it's not the right size. It's the one it came with. You know, this guy says, use the one it came with. This one says, well, the pictures of the guys in the codex have this. I don't really care. You play any 40K game against me. If your base looks cool, I'll give you a compliment. I don't care about size of it. If, you know, Dean's got Terminators on small bases. That's what they came with. And he's like, I don't really feel like updating them. That's yeah, cool. Whatever. I prefer to update mine, but I'm not going to not play you. Um, so if it's a half an inch from the enemy, and then half an inch from your guy with next to that, or in that half inch, like it's not, does base size really make a big difference? It might matter if you're dancing around, but once you get like in your spots, is that going to matter much anymore? So no. with how I play, where I just kind of just <clears throat> them all in a mass just because I'm lazy and don't do individual movement, that benefits me. Yeah. My guys are all clumped up anyway. It should benefit you. They're trying to encourage blobs. They That's want how, more beer end players that just go. Well, and also, this is not like we're not in rank and file like battles here. This is there's 40k's never had movement trays. It's never going to happen. So why don't well, you? Was, was that? They're still usable. I I still like for horde armies. They're a convenience, but not. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, I, it's I, not about angles. It's, it's more it's about never been game. part of the game though. Is right. My point. Um. So if that's the case, sure, let's push them in. There are some times where. I do want to do a wraparound because it's not to be cheesy. It's to make room for the next guy. You know, if there's a gap there, I want to, you know, move closer to the enemy than I was before. Cool. But then I will give a gap. So that way my next guy can move in, get him within half. Then my guy behind him. I mean, that's where the base size could come in though, because you put everybody on 25 mil bases, you could put, make a blob where a lot of people are able to get into combat. Right. The, the, the dancing around part. Of yeah. where they go around but once you get in like you're here i'm here i don't think it matters anymore because you're you're half inch from your guy and that other guy's half inch from the enemy the base could be this big it doesn't it didn't I, that's how i read it yeah, yeah. i was thinking that's really going to help like kill a can and things yeah. on 50 mil bases sure because you could be a half inch within your guy but a ways away from the enemy but you're within a half inch yeah like Half inch from your guy, if that guy you're half an inch from is half inch from the enemy. So I like it because it does reward keep closing in. Keep closing in. That's the, the goal of it. So to keep and have the, the attrition happen. Like that they're not not to be crazy maneuvering. You decided to fight. Let's fucking fight. If you don't want to fight, fall back. Which is I, I love the rule too. There's no free shots like in the I mean eighth had that, you know, same in eighth, but I like that. Um, oh, Overwatch is a big change. Uh, doesn't exist anymore for free. Uh, you got to pay a command point for it. Tau. Sure. Tau will get it because that's their thing. Um, maybe Eldar uh, Guardians or yeah. maybe. Um, but you got to pay a command point for it. So that's, uh, that's interesting. Makes assault armies better. Those aggressors you mentioned, Baron, how great were aggressors in Overwatch? 
Yeah. Next to a captain, re-rolling once. Yep. Two shots at a six. Now it's one and three with a hundred fucking dice. Yep. So yep. taking Overwatch away or so making it a command point. It's great. Uh, in regards to command points, so you build these detachments like you all, like you did in eighth edition. It used to be cheese out your detachments to max maximize your command points. Now it's no, 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 no. You are given command points and you have to spend them on detachments. Like, oh shit, okay. I don't really want four detachments anymore. Okay, now we're talking. Why don't you fill out your, your detachment like you're supposed to instead of picking the minimum, 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 minimum. Because now you pay three points, three command points for each of those like Vanguard, outright, uh, you know, those other um, detachments. And if your warlord's in your detachment, you get the money back. You get the money, you get the command points back. Uh, so if you build a battalion, it costs you whatever, four command points. But if your warlord's part of that battalion, you get the four back. Then if you want to do a, a super elite one, you pay three points for that. Um, I think they upped the battalion to allow for six elites. It used to be three, 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 except for troops. So I think they did that because they know, if you look in like every army's codex now, especially Space Marines, um, there's... Uh, an insane amount of elite entries, you know, and so you're like, well, you want to be able to use all those, but um, can you guys think of anything else? So those are the big ones. Um, I guess some people talk about the, the, the table size. I mean, it's a minimum size, but um, everyone's still going to play, you know, on, on four by six. I, I think we're going to play on, yeah, six by four at all times. Because that's what's around. That's what we have. That's what our mats are. I, I want to try three by three for the uh, combat patrol just to see. Yeah. So you play um, combat patrol and it's, you know, smaller board. It's or four it's, kill team boards, right? Is that what it is? Two. Two kill team boards. Two. Two kill team boards. And then strike force is going to be three kill team boards. And onslaught is four. The, it all, you always have two 22 sides to be 44, and then it just keeps going from there like a, a map. Yeah. I mean, it's the table size you want to play on. Ask your opponent, what do you want to play on, and fucking play on it. I don't know why everyone's freaking out about, I gotta get all new mats now, I gotta cut stuff. What? Why? Because they're all on the spectrum, man. I, I don't get it. Well, that's kind of the over, there's a bunch of other rules, obviously. Um, and it's important to note that uh, all the codexes are still usable. Yeah. And the Psychic Awakening is still usable, I assume. That was a big part of Psychic Awakening coming out. So yeah. when, it, when, when 7th went to 8th, that was a big change. Huge, totally different game. But they came out with some stuff, um, you know, the Ultramarines Primarch, you had the new Eldar uh, faction of sorts. From End Times. Yeah, from, not End Times, but uh, Fall of Cadia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you had those come out that tried to bridge the gap a little bit. That was difficult because it's different rules. Now, the nine Psychic Awakening books all have rules in it that are all valid. So, like, the first Eldar, the book that's Eldar, it's Howling Banshees are in there. Their old entries no longer valid. Use that one. But there's also um, Exarch powers for all the different Dire Avengers. And then in the next one, Faith and Fury, you get um, all these cool different um, marine leaders, different powers and abilities. And stratagems everywhere. Um, I like cards. I like, I like the stratagem cards. They're fun. But yep. it's crazy because there's so many stratagems now. They're in other books. It's like... See, that's the part where I, I get... It gets fussy for me. It's like I don't have that strategy. I don't, what, what is this one? Yeah, you know, there's um, those two other books we mentioned in a previous episode. Those uh, uh, vigilance, uh, 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 yeah, the blaze. Those have yep. uh, the extra detachments in there, extra strategies in there, extra skills in there. Yeah, uh, it's uh, you know, Mike, you said it's a little it bloated. Best. It's a little bloated. It is. Well, Mike, you mentioned a few episodes ago. I forgot what it was regarding and why we got to it, but like how. To be a tournament organizer or a league run, like you got to be up on everything. You got to get yeah. every white dwarf, every book. Um, you know, the Psychic Awakening books are forty bucks a pop. There's some fluff, some rules, but they're like this thin. So yeah. I got them because they're cool. But I get it. Like it's a. It, this is. Do you think do you think that's going to be a big selling point for the application that they're doing? Well, I don't know. So let's talk about that. We don't we don't know a ton about it um, because at the time of this recording. This, you know, it doesn't matter. We're recording a week and a half or so before it goes up. Um, we just know there is going to be one. And there's going to be a, a free version and then a mm -hmm. subscription service, probably a monthly charge. What we don't know is 
if you pay the monthly charge, do you get every update in the app as if you bought a new codex? Or is it, is there a voucher code in a codex that lets you keep that stat, not the other one? Or is it, I, I don't know. Or is it pay extra from there? All I know is the number 399, 3.99 was out listed today and people were flipping out on social media. It's like, you know that chaos night army you have? Like, you want to talk about how much shit costs, dude? Like, yeah, I think it's, to be fair to, to the, you know, the, the people that freak out, it's, people have gotten subscription overload between, you know, everything that they're paying monthly for now. They're Netflix, they're, you know, Hulu, now this, and they're, you know, who knows what video game subscriptions they have. I, uh, I will try it out for the first month just to check it out, even with the subscription, because I've gotten really good at signing up for a month and then immediately canceling, and you get retro allowed that one month, mm. just to see how I like it. Well, if it's yeah. a good product, if it's good, and like, even if I'm not playing, I don't mind paying for it. I just don't trust them on that side to be good. You're right. I want to first apologize. I didn't know we had a hobo on this, on this uh, show. I, didn't I know have an OCD had, thing about subscriptions and forgetting about them and paying for them. It's, it's a mental deficiency of mine that I admit to. Okay, that's fine. Um, listen, I'm not, I don't, I, I'll try it. And if I don't like it, I mean, battles, people bitch about battle scribe. The, 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 if you pay, give them two bucks or whatever for the yeah. year, which I did. And oh, yeah. look at it. Give them, it's like, what? Everyone complains. For the about work that. they do, it's worth it. Yeah. Of course it's fucking worth it. It's a, it's an app that lets you add up an army list and print it out. Um, so we don't know what it's all going to entail right now. I'll give it a try. Um, it's not about price for me. It's about, am I going to use it? That's all. Um, I'm as long as it's easy to cancel for like, I'm not playing this game for a few months. I'm going to cancel it, re-sign up. As long as that's all smooth, it's brought, it's Well, and, and if, if it's bought through iTunes. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I love about, I don't know yeah, if, it, how Android is with that stuff, but iTunes is good. You do a great job with it. I did a, yeah. like, I've done like LinkedIn trials. I've done like yeah. YouTube TV, all these different uh, trials. And I've done a bunch of magazine things. subscriptions that way. It's yeah. great. It's awesome. It's easy to cancel. Does Android have that, uh, Brian? Where you see everything you got a subscription to and you can cancel it, whatever you want? No. I don't think so. But I don't subscribe to a lot of that kind of stuff, so I don't know. Yeah, same deal. X Hamster. No. No. My fans. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see with, with the app. But I do want to take that um, discussion and let it lead into, we talked about the people bitching and the apps and this and that. So we talk about building an army list for years in 40K from the beginning of the game through seventh edition and sort of through eighth and ninth, it's all points all the time. Everything you do, I'll take this guy, but I want to add on this gun. That's a point. So you do in my hand in the old days and there was errors. It was difficult or whatever. It was fun to like, but so then the app started coming out. Um, what was the the old one back in the day? And like the well, there was the one they actually they actually sold, wasn't there? Back in the day, you actually bought a CD ROM for it. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. It, it was the buggy. One I had was, um, yeah. What was the one? It was an actual PC Army Builder. Company. Army Builder. Yeah. Yeah. Pre pre smartphone. This was on your computer. You opened up a blue window, and it was like these wolves out, lone wolves outside. You know, that were like the logo. And then you bought a new. You re-upped it every year, and you got new files. An army builder is what we used. And when we played games people, we had the army, but we had, you know, printed out. It was great. Not for cheating, but for math and other issues. Eighth and edition. Some really horrible people used army builder to build blood bowl rosters, and they were all Oh, wrong. that's terrible. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, I've seen that many times. And just because these programs have every game doesn't mean you need to use them for every game. It's blood bowl doesn't seem like it'd be necessary. It wasn't. It wasn't, but they're, and they handed a three-page stapled thing where it's like yeah. linemen, just, linemen. <laughs> and it should go over with Max, too. There was some guy that showed up to one of the convention tournaments that had, like, all Nurgle warriors on his Nurgle team. Like, uh, don't think that's going to work, buddy. But, well, Army Builder let me do it. Yeah. Okay. He also, and that is affiliated in what way with GW? <laughs> He also probably ignored the exclamation point before you hit the print. Yeah. He was just complimenting me on my list. With the big fucking stop sign before you hit print. Um, yeah, but I will so, say this. The current army builder everyone uses, it is not the greatest. Battlescribe? Yeah, Battlescribe. It, like when you print it it's out, okay. it's not. It's okay. 
it's it's not professional. It works, and it's it has everything you need, but it's not. Uh, if there was a slick one with that you paid for, I might be. I'd be okay. Yeah. I, I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see like almost um, unit cards get printed out. Like I input all my input, like my stuff, and then it spits out unit cards. That's got like. Um, here's the stat lines. Here's the leader. Basically, like a photocopy of the the codex, but for what actually you bought. But not, but not how GW did it with um, Age of Sigmar, where the print was micro. Oh yeah, that was. I think, oh, yeah. That was, I, I actually took those and put them in like Word and like open, like dragged it bigger to, before I hit print. So you know, and there's issues with all that, but you know, something I came to the realization the other day when flipping through the new rules. So when 8th edition came out, right off the bat, the, the first codex, I think it was Space Marines and Chaos, or I don't know, what was in the box? The Death Chaos? Guard. Death Guard. No, no, no. Oh, it was Death. Maybe Death Guard was, whatever. So yeah, Space Marine Codex, Death Guard. Open it up. You get the fluff. Awesome. Go about halfway through, you get the army list. Power level? What the fuck is this? <laughs> so this unit costs five. Well, I want to give him a last cannon and a melted gun. Cool, Still five. Five. Well, I I also can I can I get it down to four because I actually don't have the bits to make the last cannon. No, it's five. It's five. It's five. You want to add four more guys or whatever? Not now it's nine. That's why every predator had four last cannons. <laughs> <laughs> and the rocket launcher <laughs> and the heavy bolter. Every sure? single one. So when we started playing eighth edition. You know, the, the, the three of us, excluding Extreme, um, the rest of the friendly ass Grog Nerds, right off the bat, power level. Mm -hmm. and, um, I think Todd was the first person, yes. because Todd, to say, that's bullshit. We're yep. getting screwed. Like he's telling me, because I was playing Orcs, and he's an Orc player, we're getting screwed, man. Check it out. So then you know, I, I, hum I uh, humor him, and I put it all in Battle Scribe. And my, and I, these numbers aren't right, but my 50 power level army is 1237, and Biron's 50 level Salamander army is 1612. Yeah, it was significant. And he's like, dude, he's got 400 points on you. And I'm like, I agreed to play power level. He's like, it's not fair. And I go, it's 40K. When the fuck has anything ever been fair? <laughs> We're rolling mounds of dice. There, you can cheese out. It's, it's all 40k for years has been a um, half the battle. Or what extreme GI Joe? What's half the battle? Knowing, knowing 40k half the battle is well, it's thirds 30 percent, one third matchups, one third army list, one third luck, no skill. No, I don't <laughs> see it. It's probably four, probably about four. But what my point is, it's all about matchups, you know. I deployed over here. I did a command point, redeployed over here. Well, now my, my, my multi melters are all right next to your tanks. Well, of course I got the upper hand. I have the guns that will kill your big things, and your shit's worth more than mine, which means I'm, I'm doing better here. Like, that's not an army. That's just a matchup thing. So they have to here's, here's where A fixed at least some of that. You never got into a standpoint like, well, there's no point in shooting at your X with my Y because I literally can't hurt you. Well, that was right. It, yeah. A yeah, that's, I mean, that's a different point, but it's still a valid point. It was um, in the old rules, if you were, I got five Space Marines with bolters locked in combat with a Dreadnought. I can't leave or else I get cut down. There was some, whatever the rule was back then. But I can't hurt you because I'm rolling four times D6, 10 max, and your front armor is 11. Yep. What, whatever, what, you know, whatever example. That happened all the time. And you had these, oh. I can't win. You had, dare I say, Blood Bowl moments of I can't win. Eighth edition took that right out. Anything can hurt anything. It's fucking hard to do. Six is here. Six is here. Six is here. But everything's possible, which I love. I love that if you're kicking the shit out of me for three turns, guess what? It ain't over. It ain't over. Well, and also, you could still say, I'm not going to win, but I'm going to take out your whatever. Yeah. I'm going to take out your... That's true, but I mean, there, there's been times where I, I've had it turned around on me and I turn around on other people. Objective-based ones, um, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, and now, in the new rules, you're going to have secondary objectives that apply to your army, so you're going to be going for your own shit anyway sometimes. 
that you still have something to prove, I guess is my point. So um, but getting back to the power level thing. So what I, what I realized was, so I'm playing with you guys. We're doing power level. The first time we played, and then there's shame hammer and all that. And that's how we played, regardless of people talking, because they didn't care. Move to a new state, play 40K with a couple new people. They're like, no, no, we just do points. We always did points. All right. You're cool. I'm cool. I just want to play a game. Started doing points. Made sure I got Battle Scribe up to date. So I saw points. Now mm -hmm. it's like, shit, $14.99. What's, can I buy a frag grenade for one? You know, that kind <laughs> of thing. And um, you're putting together like the perfect roster. And then you're also looking at like your models. It's like, oh, now I got to tell this guy, ignore the hunter killer missile on the top of my tank because I couldn't afford it. Like, meanwhile, I also learned a lot of people that play with points that are competitive also sometimes don't give a shit about WYSIWYG. Mm -hmm. I thought that was surprising too. You think on one hand, they're militant about your fucking points and what you got. Then also, yeah, actually that's a melt and not a plasma. I just didn't have the model yet. Like, oh. And that's, that's yeah, I'm weird. Thing. I'm not a hobo about that, but if I painted something, it's like I'm not gonna paint a whole nother model to change one weapon. And I'm not gonna magnetize because I'm not that guy. I, I don't magnetize weapons. I magnetize like flying bases, but like I don't magnetize weapons. Um, I like to play WYSIWYG as much as possible. I, that's half the fun, I think. I that's think the fun. Um, yeah. You know, war gear is in the pouch, grenades are in the pouch, but gun's a gun. Guess what though? Pistols in the holster? You, you call it, man. Yep. I don't know if it's plasma in the holster. I mean, there's maybe something running down your leg a little bit. That's one of the nice cool. things about Primaris is they're more like, Primaris harken more back to 30k legions where if you have rocket launchers, you have an entire team of rocket yeah, launchers. That's true. Your very, Marines uh, very, all have bolters. Yeah, very specialized. I like that. Um, so I play WYSIWYG wherever I can. So on one hand, you have, you're playing people that are point by point to the, to the, you know, to the, to the letter, but then not WYSIWYG. Then the flip side, we play power level, whatever you want, man, 50 to 40. Hey, man, I'll get a, I'll get a ruse if, you go, if I'll go less. We wanted those, the ruse card because we had yeah. less power level. But then we were more like, well, that's not really, you know, you give somebody shit for. Uh, you know, well, and it was always easy. It's like, all right, we, because you, you did the same thing. We all started b building predators because they were really good at the very beginning. They were, yeah. Like, well, I, wanted to, use, all of I wanted to use the stratagem that combined the power of three within six inches. Yeah. So I, I built three right off the bat, you know. Three um, with, a, with a lieutenant, a captain, and a tech marine. All right. in the middle. So I'm, I don't know. I, I've always been from day one very whizzy with, with 40K. And I know the people that are against all that are like, come on, man. Like, who cares what it really has? Like, well, my thought has always been, Two reasons. One, I should be able to look at your army and know what you got. Because I don't even want, I don't want to ask for your army list. In fact, I like the old days when I didn't know what was in transports. Surprise me, man. Like, I, how the fuck would I know? Your dude's not like saying, hey, uh, the warlord's in this one. Yeah. Cool. That's the one I'll shoot. I don't even like that. I like surprises. So I don't like to see people's army lists. But I like to look and be like, oh, that motherfucker's got a last cannon. Um, but that's just the way I like to play. If I'm playing somebody I like, a friend, and he doesn't want to do that, it's all good. We're still going to play. I just, that's how I prefer to play. But what I realized with all the power level versus points, eighth edition, because most people that played eighth edition play points. A very small amount play power level. Contrary to what Games Workshop tells people. Oh, they push power levels so hard. Push it hard. That no one does it. Very few do it. So I think what they said in ninth was, okay, that's uh, I we still want to do this because we're going to do everything based on power level, like the the type of game you play, incursion versus strike force, power level 50, 100, okay, All right. Then they added in fifty plus pages in the brand the big rule book. You're going to get all about narrative play, which is fantastic. Um, and if you go to um, uh, Gorilla War Gaming, uh, Thumb Ring as uh. Canadian thumb ring, as Biron says, he, the, he shows all the pages in there. It's great. You've got your roster, you know, you pull from reinforcements. You get extra traits. If you do good in battle, people get hurt. Oh, love that. There's missions. Even if we all play different people, different stores, whatever, we can still have like a, um, a journey and they gain skills. It's great. It looks awesome. So what they said basically was we want to have power level kind of be that role. So, I think but they still have open play and, and match play. That's a holdover from 8th edition. What does open play mean? Whatever you want. 
Just bring whatever you want. Whatever. Bring all your models. Play whatever you want. Uh, batch play is by points. Everyone's got to have a, a keyword, unifying, all that kind of stuff. So narrative kind of goes in between there. And I think by having the three modes of playing, uh, open, narrative, matched, the three levels of game size, uh, in, uh, combat, combat patrols, control. clash, incursion, strike force, and onslaught. In a way, it's almost like putting like a, like a line in the sand of, you guys over there play points. We're gonna play power level over here. You can do your thing, we'll do our thing. Don't worry about not getting along, because that's how it was before. Because I wanna play crusade games, and it's all about power level. That's all we talk about. Um, I wanna use everything on my models. Now, did I put everything possible to cheese it out? I'm trying not to, I'm trying to be thematic. But if you think I did, okay, here's the thing. Are battles always fucking fair? No, they're never fair. That's the way it goes. So if I'm playing narrative and I know I just beat a cheesed out Space Marine army, that makes me feel a whole lot better. And that's okay. If I lose and the, the army I lose to, if we do points, has one more point than me, I'd be like, well, that's, that's why I lost. Three more points, right. I, was, so I, was I just gone. think that- I'll point it. Yeah, I just think that they made they made the division bigger. I, and I like that. They, they didn't, in the pre, in eighth edition, they really thought, oh, come on, power level, just get your models, build, build a quick army list. We want you to build a quick army list. Five, six, five, four, five, three. Cool, 50 points, 50 points, let's do it. No one was doing it. There's no incentive to do that. There's zero incentive to do that. So now they said, all right, let's, let's try to break it down a little bit. There are two groups. And not everybody that plays with points is win at all costs. And not everybody that plays power level is whatever. So that's fine. They're, they're in the middle of that kind of Venn diagram. But I like it because they're trying to further that divide of who really is here for some fun. Like, are you guys here to play? Like, let's, why did you pick Death Guard? Why did you pick Salamander? Why did you pick them? Because they're cool and I want this. You know, like, you look through these White Dwarf articles and these Psychic Awakening things, like, there's shit like, I think Inquisitors are cool. They're one of my favorites in the lore. But in games, they never really do anything. And like, why would I waste points on that? Well, guess what? If maybe Biron and I are going to do a five-game five game series where my, a radical Inquisitor is investigating my shit and a Puritan Inquisitor is investigating his shit, and now there's a reason to have them in games we're fighting. Someone might say, well, they're not good. Uh, you could have easily bought another. Yeah, nope. I, that's not part of the story, dude. Like, that's yep. You got to take an Inquisitor Warband that can't be targeted by XYZ. And... Right, right, right. So it's just, I like that they've, they still have both modes to play, but they're really trying to, they're pushing it, like we said, but power level, but they're, they're almost like giving up a, a little, like a little rope. Like they know they're not going to convince any of the right, right. power we're, gamers. Right. We don't, we already went to rules people and gaming groups and term and said, fix the rule book with the bullet points and all that. We already get them to do that. Now it's like, you know what? You choose your, your path. I don't, you know, whatever your gaming group's cool with. That's all. If you're prepping for a tournament list, cool. If you're creating a cool campaign, awesome. There's a way to do that. 50 plus pages of narrative rules. It's awesome. I can't wait to try that out. I can't wait to, you know, maybe play some with an army and then put it aside for a while and bust them up. Like, oh, I forgot. My leader only has one eye. I totally forgot that fucking happened because, uh, he took a melted gun shot or whatever. So I think it's just, I, I like that they've gone that way with it. Um, what do you guys think about some of that, those changes in there? I'm interested to try combat patrol specifically. Cause that's the problem with the full game is I want games to be over in an hour, hour and a half. Otherwise it's a weekend game only for me. And if I could somehow get that, the, a narrative kind of campaign based upon you know, combat patrol only. I'm I'm down for that. Yeah. There is some speeding up. Combat patrol. Oh, sorry, sure, but how many points is combat patrol? I think 500. Or 500 points, or how much power level? Uh, 50 combined power level. So now, 25 aside. Uh, maybe. Let's put his combined power level mean. Because, like we said earlier, how are you playing, Biron? Your corn berserkers are attacking my base. Of course, I'm going to have 30 power level, and you're going to have 20. Mm -hmm. Next game might be different. 
I like that. It's, it's putting it in the user's uh, you know, hands. So 50 combined power level. Incursion is the next one, 100 combined. So you could say 50 aside, but you know. But then yeah, you get a strike, strike force, which doubles that. And then onslaught, which is 300 power level uh, total. So 150 aside. Um, I believe they upped all the points anyway. Yeah. But, you know, with the coherency rules, you're going to lose models a little quicker. Um, I, I still don't mind. Like, if I'm fully engaged with someone I'm having fun with, yeah, I'll play a three-hour game. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I, I, I mean, some of my most fond memories, and this, this actually, I think this is a good lead-in because we were going to talk about our pros and cons um, of the game, but because um, we kind of covered a lot in the, the, the rules now. Some of my most fond memories of gaming are 40K. Like, we're gonna co- we've covered a lot of games in the show already, and we are going to cover a lot more. And I'm not saying 40K is my favorite game, but like, how is it that I remember so many things that happened in those games, in those moments? Like someone doing a certain thing, or grabbing an objective, or a, a one last guy, like a death or glory, like one guy left in the unit, he killed a land raider. Holy shit. You know, he was crushed the next turn, but still he, you know, we, uh, we, we remember his name. Um, but it's like, that doesn't happen with a lot of other games for me. I just don't have the memories and the experiences in a lot of other games that I've done with 40 K over the years. Um, even recently, even the, the stuff that me and Biron talked about with the genius theories popping up behind me. I don't remember what happened in, our other games, like our other game systems. But I remember 40K. Is that because it's the best game ever? I don't think so. I think it's because with a universe like 40K, there is a a time and money commitment, but not just for the game, but for everything. We're reading a codex, we're reading novels, we're watching videos, we're painting, we're adding our own like thing. Um, Here's another one for you. Like, I will buy painted models for most other game systems. Like, you know what? Yeah. How many times am I going to play this game? Let me buy a, a, a unit of whatever. I don't do it for 40K. I just don't. I paint all my stuff. It might take forever, but I do paint my own stuff in 40K. Why don't I do that in other games? I think there's just a, there's a connection that I've had with 40K forever, with the lore, reading the books, and enjoying getting into the armies. So, Viran, what I was saying earlier was, we, I remember things that happened in 40K games from second edition to the last edition. I remember things. I don't remember shit from the other games we play. I just, I don't remember what happened in Kings of War Skirmish. I don't remember what happened in Dreadball. I, but I remember shit that happened in 40K. I don't know why, but that has to count for something. And so, for me... It's not the greatest game system that's ever lived. It never has been. It never will be. But it's all immersive. You are all in or you're not in because if you're not painting, you're playing. If you're not playing, you're assembling. If you're not assembling, you're reading. Or you're building the perfect army list or whatever. It's all part of it. That shit does not happen with other games. So for me, that's the ultimate pro. Um, the, the con is two big ones. Um, rules discrepancies, which always happen because codex, 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 codex. Oh, what, what happened here? Oh, well, this said that is this. So that always happens. And then the sheer number of garbage bags of shit that play this game and that gravitate to this game. It's a turnoff for me. It's a turnoff for a new player getting in. It's a turnoff for everybody except other shit bags that play 40 K. Um, that sucks. The best games of 40K, love Grognard games, but were the ones at my house in like 15, 20 years ago. Or what I just, because they were people I played with that were my friends. And it wasn't a ran, random person. It wasn't a tournament. It was just, maybe we even had like some, uh, a cool soundtrack going on and we brought up a, a cool objective and mission about why, why we're fighting, whatever. I remember that shit. So for me, that's the ultimate pro. But the ultimate con is the, you go to any town in, in the world and you will find 40k players if you're looking for them they're out there awesome you got you got opponents wherever you go and then you meet them and you're like oh fuck i'm gonna put this army in storage is there a like a weird game i can get into where i can just find one person and we just have a thing 
Like that yeah. it's like W Y R D, like yeah. <laughs> hats and monocles. Yeah. Uh, so that's for me. That's that, that's the ultimate pros and cons of 40k. I'll always say the pro. It, it's all immersive, and the con is always fuck. I'm not playing those people. But I would play them in Blitzball. I would play them in I don't know, you know, uh, a super show, card game. Uh, it's because 40k is underworld. Is I play into. It's not a side game. You got to go balls deep. You got to go past the knot. You got to go past the, the knuckle. Yeah, you got to you got to fist that mofo. You got to start two 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 spread. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> this second date. Yeah. yeah, and then the shocker comes. And yeah, and this and then this and then. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. No, sorry, Mike. Well, there's something to be said, too, about the games you played when you were younger. You know, they, they meant more. Like, I, I have very vivid memories of playing D&D &D first edition. Those rules were garbage. And you can't go back, but you still have fond memories of them. So, I mean, the, point, yeah. Yeah. With your tobacco, yeah. bro. Yeah, your, uh, your formidable years, is that what they were called? Yeah, formative. Formidable. Formative. What's formidable? formidable. <laughs> They were formidable and formative. I've never had formidable years. I, I, I get beaten every game, but um, I, and, you, yeah. know, you know, it was it was new, and that was that's what you had, and back then too, that's what you had. Yeah, I'll give there you really that. There weren't competition games like there are now, so uh, yeah, I'll definitely give you that. That's um, but here's the funny thing: Bira and I both remember playing Seventh Edition 40K, not a good rule set, and we had some a blast in those games. But the you know we'll never we forget. remember specific things happening in those games. We'll never forget the Gene Stealer in, uh, incursion that be, behind our enemy lines. I'll never forget that. It was it was fun. So, yeah, I think you're right um, overall. Yeah. But I, I'm still gonna have a memorable game in 40k, win or lose, and that does not happen in other game systems. I'm not. I'm never as attached. And I, and I do love fun. when really dumb stuff happens in games, and it happens yeah. a lot in 40k. It does. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, I mean, rolling hundreds of dice for orcs, you get some cool shit. Um, so it, things happen. Overwatch hitting on sixes, that's only one worst at their best. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, Extreme, I know in a previous episode, I think it was our Warcry one, you talked about how you love like a dice economy. You know, you're doing one thing to represent others and then in blood bowl how it's like you know roll a dice and i said oh, i don't want my whole life to be determined by one dice roll like, oh that's why people love it risk then management you, yeah the other side is 40k the other side is um how many do i have um uh, i actually like that want to know why because it's, like, it's a gamble like it's it's a i don't know what the fuck those dice are going to turn up and if i got the black ones with the red pips Oh shit, Mike knows. Oh shit. <laughs> well, uh -huh. here, here's the thing: like, we haven't talked that. about something cool. Usually happens at least once in every game of 40k. Totally. And we haven't talked that. about this game yet, Marvel Crisis P Protocol. There's something about that game where something wacky and crazy would happen once in every game mm -hmm. that was heroic. Does it make you remember those moments? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. That's I awesome. just haven't. I don't have the same experience. I've played, you know, 20 games versus a lot more of eighth. But something crazy always happens. And I, I, as long as something crazy and, and bizarre happens, I don't care if I win or lose. Yeah. I, that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, um, you know, to go back to, uh, I know, our uh, topic of, when we talk about, like, when you watch pro professional wrestling on TV, it's about putting on a good match. You're putting on a show. It's not about wins and losses. And 40K to me is like that when you play on a narrative side of things. I want cool shit to happen. Do I want my souped up shock attack gun to take out your uh, Titan? Fuck yeah, I do. Um, and that would be awesome. But with my luck, I'm going to roll 12 shots, 2d6, and then the strength is three. Or I roll two shots, and then I got strength 10. You know, it's, that's, you know, it's fun shit that happens in those games. Like, um, I, the last campaign we did, Shame Hammer, it was me and Ryan neck and neck. I never beat him. And in the final game, in Shame Hammer, I, I accumulated like six shame points. So I'm like, I'm just going to throw everything I can at him and see what happens. I still lost, but the greatest thing that happened is I had the biggest, super big space marine flyer. 
before it even took a single hit from enemy fire, it only had three wounds left. <laughs> because it was blowing stuff up and getting caught in that explosion, overcharging plasma and blowing that up. It yeah. was glorious. It died horribly, and I lost the game, but it was fun. Yeah, it's just those are memorable things of the game. And people think about, like, you know, uh, first turn, alpha strike, this and this. It's like, what the fuck are you playing for? Like, like please. <laughs> what on the first turn? Who's next? Yeah, it's like, tell me what the fuck your goal in life is and your goal in gaming is. Is it to win trophies? Because you could find a better game than 40K to, to match your level of intellect. Because uh, this is not the game for that. No. This is the game to see the things you read about come to life. That's if you're why a running strategist and really competitive, if you want to test yourself, 40K is not the game. There's other no. more. Fuck no, it's not. The Brain game. intensive games out there than 40K. Yeah. Find a game that doesn't have a billion dice. You know, it's like find a game with no dice, ideally. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's like we play 40K because we want to see that shit come to life. That's why, Biron, you and I love Primaris because the internet, a lot of people hate them. It's like, no, that's how it's supposed to be. That's the fucking Space Marines. That's what they're supposed to do. You know, all those organs that they have? Now it's reflected in their stats and, and how they perform. Oh, so, they got punched by a guardsman and they're dead. Right. Yeah. It's just, I love that shit. It should be how it is. And, and if it's, if you're playing a straight out win and a beat stick list and I was like, why the fuck do you want to play this game? It's way too expensive if you're doing that. You know what I mean? Like there's plenty of other games you can play that are a competitive nature and there's tournaments and you can win prizes that you don't have to worry about painting and modeling. But if you think it's cool. If you're buying more than three of the same unit that's not a troop, Right. Chances are that rule's broken is going to get corrected. So don't bitch yeah. at me when it becomes useless. Yeah, exactly. Like you're, you found a, you found a thing. You found a, a loophole. You found a, oh shit, I can do this. Um, and it's like, why, why is that army here? Why, why is uh, people that take the, uh, you know, like uh, Demon Prince or something or the uh, Primarch? It's like every game. Well, yeah, it's part of my army. So in all of these stories for this millennia that were before he's a, he, every single battle with those guys he's there he's at every one right like he he's got it on his check oh fuck another 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 battle like people make pick stuff because it's super competitive and it's like you wonder why the game gets a bad rap that's why it's the players that make a game and it's the players that fucking ruin a game games workshop has great intentions they want to sell models duh Guess what? Uh, we want to buy models. Sounds like a great fucking partnership. We want to buy models. We want cool rules for those models. You're going to do your best at it. Cool. So that's fun. That's why we have narrative and open play and, and gaming groups and friends. But tournaments bring out the worst in people. Competitive play in this game brings out the worst in people. And that's why this game has a fucking shit rap about it. That's why people quit. Well, it's not even the, like, competitive gamers in tournaments, that's fine. That's what you're there for. It's the people that are competitive at open play games that are shot. Yeah, fair point. And they'd say, well, I'm testing out my list for Adepticon. Against newbies? Why? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just, um, it, it's, it really is a, you know, something that was said in an earlier episode was about liking campaigns or liking the idea of campaigns. And, you know, I don't really even know when that applies or when it doesn't because it's easy to say, well, I like the idea of a campaign, but like, but if you really do and you have the right group, if like all the things align and you have the right group of people and the right setting and maybe a store or a club or a basement, you're going to do it. You're going to have fun. Like I think what turns people off of campaigns is it sounds like a lot of work or what happens when, uh, someone becomes the the turd in your your punch bowl and you had something super nice and set up and then this fucking guy came because he overheard you talking about it in a store it's like that's what people are scared of i don't think they're scared of the campaign they're scared of it getting ruined or too much work um because i would love to do mike me and you ran we did a 40k campaign years ago um you did you did a warhammer fantasy campaign where you put it together and then we had me you Jason, a few other people. Then I did a 40k campaign with capturing different moons, and they all had different uh, abilities. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, like a low gravity one. When that we, I had a d66 table or or even d100, whatever of like shit that happens to you. Um, 
And it was like, and I took pieces from all these different things and merged them all together. It was fun to do it. And I had fun people to play with. Um, that's not a, I like the idea of it. No, I want to do it. I, I think it's just, it's easy to. But you, easy. you were a gatekeeper to that campaign. Fuck yeah, I was. I say. Yeah. Fuck no, yeah, I was. no normies. No, not at all. What are you guys playing? Before we were at the bunker. 40K? Oh, cool. You know, can I get next? No, I got to go to work after this. What about <laughs> Sorry, you? Sorry, I have AIDS. <laughs> we didn't use that one. We should have. Sorry, bro. Club club game only. Dude, I always had a fucking excuse ready to go. Like, I'm not gonna I hurt the go. kids. Yeah, I'm not gonna hurt the kids' feelings, but I have no intention of ever playing any of these people. Sorry, I got diarrhea. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm gonna be sick as soon as when you want to play five o'clock. Yeah, at five, I'll be sick. Like, I mean, it's just not gonna happen. So I'll talk to them and would be friendly, but of course I was a gatekeeper, and that's a big thing right now in games. Is Oh, do you really want to be so inclusive? Or, no. Know, like, well, I want to play my friends. It's free. It's my free time, and it's precious yeah. to me. You know, if you don't like that, fuck off, because it's my game. I'm playing it because I want to play my friends. It's it's my. I'm allowed to have fun. Like, I don't have to play games with everybody. It, now, it, I, it, both of us have run stuff for Todd when the sh shop was opening, because, you know, we yeah. had get the word out but yeah. eventually we didn't it wasn't necessary anymore so we no longer had to do that thankfully uh other people stepped up yep you know something extreme used to always talk about in the old days of blood bowl was if we didn't run shit who would have i don't know or if we stepped down who would have like i don't care anymore uh, but i just want to have fun at my, at my games and i have a feeling that ninth edition will be the most fun i'll ever have including my including the old days including the uh, formative slash formidable years of my youth um, I, because I'm at a different place now it's just like you know what? I don't care if someone doesn't want if someone's like well yeah, he wants to do his own thing you know what if I find one cool person we play that's it my wife plays now she, ne she never really wanted to play 40k before now she does that's cool um, you know if, if I play with a couple cool guys here and it never expands beyond one or two okay Guess what? I've got three armies. Other people probably have three or four armies. And at a certain point, you have all the combinations. And then you do it again with different missions. You get the new open war cards. There's a billion combinations there. You know, like, well, we never did this deployment. We never did this twist. Well, that's because that deployment had circles in it. So we threw it in the trash. Right, circles. <laughs> well, then you looked at, I took some screenshots of like the, um, you know, in, in the, the, the new book, the big new book. And it's like, you've got so many different things from, missions in the game like the basic open play missions and then you go to the narrative and you've got the crusade style then you got like requisition okay i'm gonna get spend a requisition point for fresh recruits spend another one for a, a warlord trait and then i'm gonna spend one on a new relic like if you play narrative and the crusade rules like it is endless opportunities to have fun games and that seems awesome I, so I, I to me there's there's no negative once you gatekeep once you find a clear uh, answer to rules, because again, rules discrepancies was my one con, big con, and the other big con was the, the shit bags. So if you get rid of those, it's a great game. Um, for you guys, what are your big pros and cons? Are they the same? That and, and uh, it does have an incredible amount of lore, and that's a big pull for me. That and the old fantasy world had tangible things that I could grasp onto and base armies around, which I think is lacking in a lot of other games that maybe have tighter rule sets, yeah. like Kings of War. Really tight rule set. Games are around for lore. 10 years, and they've only just now come out with a lore, really. And it really is. Um, I mean, is it, just, is it really just this, the idea of we wanted to cater so much to disgruntled Warhammer fantasy players that we just want to give them a game they can they can yes. enjoy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, yeah, and it was. I mean, Kings of War was kind of designed to be a tournament game because of the speed, but yeah, it. it but it, it the old fantasy with the different themes, the different, uh, you know, the if you're playing Empire, the different the cities and the different, you know. Yeah, they were all different. You had like different schools of magic. It was right? both broad yeah. and deep. 
the lore. Yeah. Both fantasy and 40K. Well, if yeah. you don't have the lore, I mean, <coughs> in a weird way, you're, you're sort of um, jeopardizing more sales for your company because if you don't have the lore, you can't come out with shirts. Um, you can't come out with novels. Um, short. I mean, you, you don't, if you don't have the source material and it's constantly being, you know, I don't want to say updated or advanced, but just added to, you're, you're fucking yourself. You're, 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 you're painting yourself into a corner to say, well, we got a good game. If you're looking for a game, we got a game, right? That's, that's kind of what you're, you miss uh, in other games. Yeah. I've, I've gotten to debates with, like, other people about, you know, the lore is important. The lore is what really drives me to pick an army. And uh, a lot of games kind of just don't have that. It's just, you know, orc. Every every faction in 40k has something i like about it yeah there's um there's just it's weird it started off in the old days there was you know a handful it was mostly just the codex whatever's in the codex hey before you know before that you had like you know rule book or the, the old chaos books rogue trader then you get a codex for everybody it's got some fluff then novels started getting written and some of them in the early days weren't as great um but because you get who you get writing those. But as time went on and it became further and further, it's like, yeah, there is shit from everybody that is cool. doesn't mean I'm going to play Necrons, but I could appreciate the story of the old ones. Um, I mean, it's cool. You, every, everything can draw you in. Well, I, I dislike Necrons until I learned about Trays on the Infinite. Because <laughs> that guy is awesome. Yeah, they find, they find a, cool, a, a cool story, a cool character about him. Yeah. It's I mean, outside of things that have existing IPs like Star Wars or Marvel, whatever, or, yeah, Marvel, yeah. I mean, that's that's a different animal. I mean, it's not you know, but it's like 40k may have started from space fantasy, like Eldar, our space, book. Elves. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what's our space dwarfs, space orcs, and but it's really grown like insane in the last 15 years, especially. And now the new Psychic Awakening books are even further in the storyline. The map is different. Things are changing. Things are happening. Um, I still think one day they will kill the Emperor. I think that will happen one day. Um, because that's the No, ultimate. what they will first do is he will emerge from the chair in his full form and then die. So they could sell the skull model on the <laughs> throne, the big model, and then the dead model. When you say they, you mean Forge World, right? I think is it's that? big enough where they would do hard plastic. Oh, really? Oh, fair enough. Yep. Yeah. It's. I think. I just think. I, would, I think something like that might happen one time, and then there might be a another uh, another civil war of sorts with people that follow uh, Raboot Guiman and his, and he becomes the new emperor, and the rest of the whatever. I just they are doing a little bit slowly, slowly advancing. But I mean, they advanced Eldar uh, with the uh, Yanari, Yanari, all that. That was never a thing. They were always the dying race forever. They started off the dying race uh, forever with their, their lore. Now they actually are doing shit to, uh, to stay alive. They are not going gently into that good night. No, not at all. Um, so it just, I just like that. They're actually doing some of that now, too. That's never been done before. They never had the balls to, to change the, 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 the lore. Well, it's been, yeah, really, it was, until 8th, it was stuck at the same time for a long yeah. time. I really, I think the, the call stuff with Primaris is mm -hmm. really what told them, you know what? If Crawl is one of the best characters they came up with in recent years. Great. Time. Phenomenal. If people get pissed off because of uh, uh, Reboot Gooeyman, Gooeyman, whatever, um, Call, Primaris, if they get pissed off, they don't play, fine, fuck them. Guess what? They're still playing. They're still buying stuff. They're still bitching. It wouldn't be 40K if they weren't bitching, but they're, they're learning as they go, like, oh, my God, we can actually turn it up a little bit. We could do this. So I'm you waiting. You should happen. Much like you're watching this, expecting this story to hopefully end soon. Um, I totally get it. In uh, 40K, things are changing, too. I love that. Um, so we went through my pros and cons and Mike's. Um, Biron, did we do yours yet? No. Let's do uh, yours and clo close it with extreme, then we'll go to ratings. Uh, pros, uh, it is both – the greatest lore, but also in a lot of cases, the most ridiculous lore. It's Great, so grim dark, it borders on parody. 
Yeah. Great but I love it. Those things, though? What's that? Great because of ridiculousness? Yes. If it was more serious, it wouldn't be as good. Right. It has to be ridiculous. Yeah. I, I just started reading, um, well, listening to the Horus Heresy in the last six months or so, month book seven. And wow, uh, the whole premise of the Horus Heresy and the Space Marines of the Primarchs is the dumbest thing on the planet. The Emperor is really dumb. His Primarchs are a bunch of dumb babies. And their heel turn was so obvious that it, it borders on ridiculousness. But I loved it anyway. Yeah. I think... Um, um, Space Marines are boring characters. Uh, the Primarch Fulgrim is fun. And the one good guy, Death Guard, is my favorite regular Space Marine. I forgot his name. He's the Garo? one that is... Garo, yes. Yeah. He was my favorite uh, Space Marine, but I love the Remembrancers. I thought those guys are a lot of fun. There's a lot of so, cool lore with the chapters and the horse yeah. has its own thing. The thing you got to remember, and I, I don't know if it's ignorance with 40k players regarding the lore but you know when do you guys remember when dark heresy came out the role-playing game yeah mm -hmm. okay so i played that with some guys it was a fucking blast we loved it because we were already 40k players for fun playing tournaments in our house and team tournaments and already had that dark heresy was based around inquisitor i believe we worked for an inquisitor so the, the us you were the rent retinue yeah, I, I guess the DM was the Inquisitor, I guess if you think about it. Um, even though there was, I mean, they were other things too, but we were the retinue, so uh, I was kind of like hired gun, bounty hunter guy. There was like priest, you know. The, so, but we're doing stuff. We're, we're investigating, we're doing missions because that's what Inquisitors do. Inquisitors and their story are better in lore than they are in the game. Yes. They're just, you know, so that, was, that made for an outstanding role-playing game. Why? Well, because we're all free thinkers. We're humans. We have strengths, we have weaknesses, we have emotions, we have things we're talking about and doing and that kind of thing. Then they did a Rogue Trader one, which I never played. Um, I heard it was okay. And then they did a Space Marine one, which I never played, but then I heard bad things. It's called, it was Death Watch. So well, now, a Space Marine, how much fun can it be? Right. So now let's not do this. So let's, the four of us are, played Dark Heresy. We loved it. We all had a blast. We investigated Heresy. We killed some demons, whatever. Now we're playing Death Watch. Biron, you were pulled from the south. Manners, good job. Here's your shoulder pad. Mike, you were pulled, you know, we're all in there. We're space marines. Like, what do you think we're going to talk about? It's about war, how to kill properly, and how to not die, like, and how to save the gene seed. Like, that's it. They're robotic for all intents and purposes. That's, that's what a space marine is. It was built as a, 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 a strike force of a, um, like, a shock troops. You know, like, it's not about, it's not, we have to save this one. Why? No, do the mission. Like we're here to do the fucking mission. So how would you ever do a role playing game without being the one like the one the guy that goes, oh yeah, my guy's gonna. You're dead. Like you can't do that. Yeah. Your, your guy's gonna follow the fucking mission because we're space marines. Like I always thought that was crazy. And I hope somebody in the comments tells me I'm wrong that and says Death Watch role playing was great because I want to know how did you pull off space marines. Making that's decisions. why i love the idea of a death watch army it, like i built one in kill team fully painted up or like that i love the idea of like every little chapter sends a dude and you'd like to think like they're sending the best of the best but you know in reality like this guy's not that great how do we get rid of him we <laughs> it's, see the death it, it, it's the guy at your job that you want to get rid of but instead you get he, they promote him right they promote him to somewhere else where they don't have to deal with him he gets oh, a brand that, title. I, yeah. I would make it as a misfit misfit space marines that are not really that good at their job, but just good enough to make it to full Space Marine? Well, I mean, Instead I suppose... of Death Watch, or the Shit Watch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, uh, yeah, he's really good at fighting orcs. Have you guys ever fought orcs? No, but he's really good at it. Take him. <laughs> and he's, are those the green ones? Like, oh, motherfucker, come on. <laughs> like, maybe Death Watch, because they're, in a sense, working for Ordo Xenos, yeah. telling them what to do. Maybe... There's something there, but a nor I mean, that's probably why they chose Death Watch rather than a role playing game about ultramarines or something, because what would you do? Like, yeah, because well, Death Watch you could at least have, hey, this is the like Salamanders, he's the nice guy or whatever. And well, I mean, to be fair, isn't a role playing game of Space Marines 40k? Isn't yeah. that what it is? If if their job is to be awesome at war and combat, 
I'm being a, I'm role playing as, you know, the general. I know Biron hates that, but that's, yeah. that's, that's kind of what it is. That's what they're there for. There's no, so that's why, like, when you talk about the lore of the Space Marines, it's like, it, it is kind of weird because that's what I found too. I like it. I think it's cool. There's a lot of cool chapters, both Chaos and, you know, or Chaos Legions rather. And, but I mean, there's still also, it's like, uh, it's like someone who doesn't have a, a normal brain learning how to do things. They don't have emotions and other stuff like that. So, so, so going back to the lore, Fulgrim's gay, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I of the Primarchs that I've read about so far, Fulgrim is by far the most interesting. Well, if you, as each as each of the traitor legions, I mean, some of them were aligned to Chaos Gods, some of them were not. Mm -hmm. If you are really into Slanesh. And you don't play an instrument. I, or, at least, well, or, no, bi. I would say he's bi. Or pan. Yeah. <laughs> they, but, don't have, they don't but, have pan. But like Naro, they tried to make more human-like, so he was more like relatable. But I think in general, Space Marines are boring. Yeah. Um, well, it's just they're, they're there for a purpose. And I think Space Marines are cool, the idea of them, what they're there for. But let's not pretend you're going to get, like, uh, a, a monologue from a Space Marine sergeant about – you know, how he felt today. That's why I kind of liked the Fulgrim book, because the Emperor's children were so, I don't know, they were snobby enough to the word well, personality, where they're like, oh, you're just like an enlisted space marine. You're never, you're not officer material. Yeah, I mean, the, the idea of perfection and being aloof is is their thing. Yeah, so, so they had the best character. of uh, Overall, best characters were in Fulgrim. So if you're going to read a book about space marines, read Fulgrim. Yeah, it's, it's just that there's, there's also the chaos ones also have more more to them. There's more, yeah. you know. There's actually just more with it. Hey, we got a new subscriber to YouTube, Josh Aldis subscriber. All of a sudden, <laughs> I think because he listened to the Blood Bowl episode. He did. <laughs> he found out that he's the reason I hate Blood Bowl. Oh shit, <laughs> Josh! I hope you're watching Proud this. Of it. <laughs> That's awesome. Good time. Uh, so lore is a big plus. No matter how dumb it is, it can't be dumb enough for my tastes. Um. The models, ever, my big thing with the regular original Marines or sh or shorty Marines or little one wound Marines. Is firstborn? Just, firstborn, fucking get rid of all of them. Have them all get a virus and fucking die because they look ridiculous now. You could, I mean, if you want to advance the storyline, you know what a good storyline would be. Yep. They're gone. Oh, like, Papa Nurgle came with a virus, but it was too late. It only killed the firstborn space Marines. Good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they say the firstborn, you know what? They're, there might be a taint of chaos. They've been around too long. Yeah, what see. I want them to do yeah. is for Call to start experimenting with the traitor gene seed and start making some primaris chaos marines. Oh, that's going to happen eventually. Yeah. I mean, it could. What, what they did, though, if you notice, with each release of chaos marines, they went a little bigger. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, sort of like the Thousand Suns uh, rubric Marines are a little bit bigger, and the fucking Death Guard are huge. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing what we all thought they would do with Space Marines. Mm -hmm. Leave the rules, make new models. Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Because that happened. I remember, so I was playing Space Wolves, and I had all these ones from, like, early 2000s. Then they came out with a, a new, like, Grey Hunters box. And they all, like, it looked like their legs were all a little, they weren't squatting as much. They were all, like, like he stretched the leg out and they all were taller and it was, and they had, it was cool. Cause they had like runes cut in there. They never had that before. They just space wolves were just a space marine body with uh, pelts and heads. Now yep. they actually start doing, but that was my first taste of scale creep in, in plastics of like, they're well, doing they could get more detail with just what increasing the scale slightly. Well, detail, but also what are space marines in the lore? Let's get back to it. They don't look, they're, they should not stand eye to eye with the guardsman. No, no, they should. Well, it's a it's a commissar. I don't give a fuck. Still, he's still commissar five, eight feet tall. No, yeah, that motherfucker's five ten on a good day. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's not eight foot tall. You don't get eight feet eating corpse starch. <laughs> right, them's good eating. Um, the lore is so deep that it has bodies recycled into corpse starch. I love that. There's also a drug. dust that you could snort to get high. Yeah, that's a necromanda drug. I, yes. Yeah. I would love, by the way, I would love to do a Necromunda role-playing game. Because that would be, a, that's how I would run a campaign, would be as an arbitrator, but like make people like, no, there's other shit we're doing. Well, that's kind of, when you think about it, like a retinue for an Inquisitor could be a ganger. 
you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have been. Could be a spy sent down there. I still, to this day, wish they'd make official rules for all the Necromunda gangs for Kill Team, because I think that would work awesome. Well, the biggest thing is um, the, the weapons and armor are a, a huge teardrop. So, well, no, but, you, but you, then do it. Make it where it's like, this is just Necromunda. Right, right, right. It would be, you and I are going to play Necromunda, or gangs against each other. You can't do uh, five Primaris against no. my Goliath gang. Um, I'm dead instantly. I mean, it's six plus armor all around. Yep. But, yeah. So, anyway, so lore is a, a huge pro for all of us. Lore is well, a thing. The models much. are a thing, especially as they, like one of the models that I wanted to like but hated was the Necron Warrior. Well, they've just fixed that, apparently. Did you see what came out they put today? The Necrons over the years. It was through Warhammer Community posted it. And I was thinking, like, I hope they show that first one, the one that I bought. Yeah. And it was, I didn't realize that, like, so it's a Necron. He's got a Goss Flare, like, up in the air. One piece metal. Yeah. I didn't realize, though, his head's like, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Under him. It's crazy, you know. And, and it's even that way on the, the, the current Necron Warriors a little bit. Like, bit, like yeah. this, so that's kind of cool. They throw back to that, and and I'm looking forward to. I hope they do. What is the the ones with the skin on them? The flayed ones. Yeah, yeah the flayed, flayed ones. ones. They need to release plastics of that because I think they're fine cast. Yeah, right. now they're fine cast. I didn't know that. Yeah, Though, I just the idea of a Necron warrior that went insane and is draping the skin of his victims on them is just cool. so cool. There's some cool shit. Uh, they still have immortals. Yes. Okay. Those guys were always my favorite in the old rules because they were just they were in ridiculously tough. There was one guy we in my gaming group who played Necron. He was cool about it. It wasn't like your Necron guy. Um, but it was just like, yeah, those guys were like, when I saw them on the field, I'm like, fuck, <clears throat> tough five. I don't want to deal with that today. Well, what's I'm cool, like, the cool thing I like about Necrons is they seem like they were a faction designed to fight Space Marines. Well, yeah, I guess they were, um, you know, when, when new people would get into the game, I would tell them to play either Space Marines or Necrons. They're like Necrons, I thought Space Marines. Like, yeah, but they were Space Marines that don't die. So, like, well, if and, you, and if you want to be able to put an army together quickly and paint it, you can't. Yeah. Do it. Right, easy to. Okay, so the the Green Rod days, which by the way, the Green Rod is hard to even do properly anyway. I'm glad that I'm glad they're ditching the Green Rod. Well, yeah, because it's like you're gonna get it kicked with glue, and no matter. Or, what you're, or you're gonna like, all right, I'm gonna paint them. I'm gonna leave the rods off, and then you're gonna lose the rods. Right, okay. totally. Um, I hate losing my rod, and. uh Necrons, easy to paint. Spray black, dry brush silver, you're done. You're, you're battle ready already. Mm -hmm. Yes. They were, they were one of the most forgivable armies. I don't know about the new rules, but I mean, Space Marines, you know, fours across the board and three armor, and then they can come back and they don't die. Like, they, you know what I mean? Like, that's cool. It was a, a big plus. Um, you know, I think the guy that played them, he thought it was awesome. He, he carved like runes in his bases. He went all out with like, you know, the look and the style of it. So, I mean, it's a cool army. It never was my thing, but it is a cool army. And the new models, it, I like them. So, I'm yeah. looking forward to trying them out. At least, at least that's the other thing I want to try about uh, Combat Patrol is trying out armies. Yeah. I, I got a kick out of the, they had a thing about, you know, color, you know, color palettes for Necrons. And it was silver, and this one's got a green highlight. And then it was silver, and this one's got a purple highlight. I'm oh, like, wow. come on. <laughs> Well, because some of them have like little things on their shoulder that you can paint yeah. different colors and stuff. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was an accent at best. Yeah, so. is it is it bad form to paint them like bronze? No, that's that's actually one one of them is all rusty because they're more decayed. Yeah, them, which, which one, I actually did like a a series of test models for Necrons back when I was toying with playing with them. And one of them was like a bone colored thing, yep. but it was way too intense to paint. It looked good, yeah. but, but then you realize I don't want to paint fifty of these. Yeah, I don't want to paint fifty of them with the with the white and the you know the yellowish. And, and when you know, although maybe with skeleton horde contrast, which is another great color. Yeah, do wraith bone base and skeleton horde over it. You're done. Yep. Um, but I mean, the the classic method is so easy to in Necrons and looks good. It, it does looks look good on mass for sure. Yeah. I, the is, I never the liked their stupid pyramids. Like the monoliths? Yeah, I thought those always looked stupid. You know what I hated about the monoliths? Uh, 14 armor all the way around. And like 
flying and like shitting out new Necrons every turn. Yeah. I don't know if they still do any of that, but back in the day, if I saw yeah. that out there, I'm like, fuck, come on. I hated them. They were, they were a land raider, but better. And then yeah. I saw two, two of them. I was like, fuck. Fuck you, I'm not playing you. Yeah. So <laughs> lore, models uh, are the plus side. Uh, rules are almost irrelevant to me because I think the rules could change and I'd still like it for the same reasons. Yeah, it's weird. Like th this rating we're all giving in our pros, I mean, it's not a ninth edition review. No. It's not an eighth edition review. It's a 40K as a game discussion. In fact, I won't even put the word review in this one because it's not, it's a, it's, it, you can't really review ninth. People are, that's fine. They got the whole yeah. book. They only got a handful of games under their belt anyway. And no, you know, no one has a codex, but this is a 40K discussion. And rules are kind of, you know, I don't want to say irrelevant, but they're, they're like the least important thing to They're ancillary about. to the overall. Totally. Thing. And the other thing I like about 40K is it's one of those games that just by itself could be your hobby. You could say, my hobby is Warhammer 40,000. Totally. When I, um, I don't, you might have been either no power or taking a shit when I said this, but for me, like, I'll always, like, I'll always paint 40K stuff. That's, that's my hobby. Other games, I just, I just want to play them. I don't, I don't want to hobby rumble slam stuff. I don't, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. It needs to look a certain way. And, and, and I just rather, I just rather buy it, whatever. And I might paint some of those. That's fine. But it's not part of the hobby for me. I just want to play the game. But I, I always get more connection with a game if I paint the models myself. Yeah, I think that that does happen to a lot of people. Um, for me, it's really like, it's really 40K. Like I, I don't, I have no problem playing with painting some other things, but I will not do it with 40K. I just want to, I, I, because I, to me, the game is one, one thing. That, like collecting, modeling, maybe kit. Five bags. build battle, bro. Yeah. Uh, painting, army list. Well, reading. here's the funny thing. It's all part of it. But I, I violated that because, so here's the Predator I painted. But then Todd had this one for 30 bucks. Oh, take it. Already. Salamander, yeah. Forge World stuff included. That's great. I so couldn't. I will actually say, I, I will go against one thing I said for the same reason. There was a guy selling the Forge World, um, uh, what's it called? Venator tank? Uh, Sicar Sicarian Ven Venator. Venator? Yeah. yeah. It's got this like neuron pulse cannon. Yes. It was on there already like sprayed black with some white stuff on it for Raven Guard. I'm like, it's cheaper than the new one. And Dude, it's a the, simple... the Forge World Space Marine tanks are so much better than the GW ones as far yeah. as appearance. They are. It, it looked great. I'm like, I mean, I'm not going to strip it. I'll keep it as is because it's, it's, it's just a tank. It's, it's sprayed black and has white and silver on it big deal but like it was cheaper than buying it it's like a 250 dollar tank yeah. Thing. um yeah and on that note so like i have an all primaris army but i don't like repulsors at all i don't like them to me i like i like land raiders i like tanks on the ground i yep. don't like i like land raiders i like vindicators rhinos whatever flying tanks that's for eldar that's that's, that's i have I have one of each of the new ones just because. So I built yeah, another I, one and I still, I still haven't built this one. And I don't fault anyone for having them. I just, so to me, uh, there's a there's a Primaris guy driving my Land Raiders. If anybody asks. His head sticks out. What? They can't go in there, technically. But that guess what? Sense. Maybe I'll in narrative play, that's a house rule. Here's Sorry. the other thing I like about 40K is if you bought like a small army and you're like, eh, it's not for me. It's got resale. Yeah. Oh, How um, many games have resale? Can you imagine? Like, look on eBay for all these other games that we've talked about and we'll talk about. If you're considering selling your shit, just keep it or get yeah. it to a Throw friend. in the trash. Yeah. Sneak it on the Todd's shelf when he's not looking. And then if you're saying, well, I want to get into something on the cheap and be a hobo, as Biron says, well, good luck. You'll never see it on eBay because it doesn't have that, that, that recycle uh, thing. You know what I mean? Like, you just don't. You don't see certain things like I'll I'll never see relic blade shit on eBay, right? You know, no one's gonna bother to post it, right? One is it's you know great game they're gonna keep it, but even if someone gets out of it, they're, it's not worth it. What you're not gonna you're gonna want to sit up there and renew over and over again. Forty k, I mean, but old metal shit, great resale value because it strips. Um, plastic unpainted. You, That's you, the thing. If you want if you want to be able to resell your shit, don't paint it. 
Right. Yeah. Plastic unpainted, if you assemble it and don't assemble it like a moron, if you assemble it normal, you could probably get, you'll get over half price. So at, at, to, at Grognard's, there was a guy, I forgot his name, super nice guy. He's a bit of an army hopper. He got into Salamander's Big, so I got the Predator off him. I got three painted aggressors. Um, he, he built them wrong. Just He built the flamer ones, which was good. That's what I wanted because I want to make a theme army. But he put the grenade launcher on it. But snap, gone. Yeah, there you go. And it's like, it's such a fine to get an army that you actually play painted the way you would kind of paint it, where that I'll go ahead and... Oh, agree. And like I said, I, I, I probably said I never would, but like I, I, I try to paint all my own stuff because it's right. a connection there. It's, it's everything, though. It's the lore. It's everything. It's just, I don't have that with other games. There yeah, are yeah. better games out there, but no other game has the all-encompassing thing that 40K does. Like, the only stuff I'll buy painted is Salamander stuff that I actually want, or World Eaters, just because, eh, maybe we'll play 30K again, and that is as deep a, a hole as you can get down is 30K. And I already have Karn the Betrayer pro-painted by one extreme Brian yeah. Mitchell. I don't remember now. We're all over the place. So well, did you know that when you left Biron, Mike became leader for a second? Oh, wow. <laughs> it said Michael J. Muller. T. Mine says J. No, I'm kidding. It says T. The T is for Thaddeus. Oh. Yeah, Thaddeus. <laughs> Thaddeus? Is it Thaddeus or Thomas? Tiberius. No. Is your middle name real Tiberius? No, it's Thomas. Oh, fuck. You should have went. You should have went with it. You had me. I went. I went Tiber. I went uh, Thaddeus because I think that was in first and ten. O.J. Simpson's name T.O. or T.D. He was Thaddeus. I think it was Thaddeus or Tiberius. I can't remember. Here's another one for you, Baron, and nobody cares watching this, so it's riveting for them too. Yeah. Um, in the Mister Mister Belvedere Brock Toon skit, I think he's like, "Let's call him Thaddeus." I think I think uh, Chris Farley said that. All right. So um, cons. Uh, cons, um, it, Not same as mine, I'm sure. The con is its popularity, right? Because you get all kinds then. Right. Um, you get you know the the knuckle draggers, ape hangers, the worst right. of the worst. Um, you get people that I don't know, like most of the, even the worst, most competitive gamers I could sit and talk to. I just don't want to play a game with them, you know. Yeah. Um. Well, you get it, it's it's too popular for its own good. It's it's like a band you like or a movie you like, or it's just you want it to be cool. But by a, a straight numbers game, the, sorry, it's it's too big. So unfortunately, if you go on any social media whatsoever or forums back in the day, the loudest voices of 40k are usually the shit bags. So, of course, it gets a bad rap. And, and for me, it's also – the one thing about the good, the broad audience is, man, you don't see – for any game system on the planet, there's no more memes than there are for 40K. Yeah. So many 40K memes, but that's also – I fear without gatekeeping, people are going to become – more people of the general audience will become aware of 40K, and it'll become problem, problematic. You know, 40K is a weird thing. I'm glad you brought up the memes because I'm glad we could talk about this part of it. Um, I don't understand the need for like, what do you call it? Not jargon, but what do you call it when like you always have to come up the with- The shorthand. The, short, yeah, like, the coded language. You know, off the top of my head, what I've, what I've seen since internet forums have been a thing. I mean, I, I, I don't think it was back in the rec.warhammer.net days. I think it started on the forums, but maybe Daka Daka was uh, yeah, yeah. I got Bolt, Bolter and Chainsword.com or whatever. Yeah. Um, um, well, I'm gonna bring Tiggy and Marnie. And I'm like, who the fuck are those? Yeah. Meet Marnie is Calgar, the chapter master, and Tigurius, the chief librarian. Like, well, yeah, I just want what we say. Damn the respect they deserve, use their full yeah. names. You're, you're playing a game that you allegedly love and the lore you allegedly love, but you have to make everything sound childish. I'm chappies. playing Sally's. I got my Libby, my Chappy. Fucking Chappies, Libby's, um, Smurfs. Uh, stream, yeah. I'm so sad that you remembered to bring this up because I had it snuck into my pro list and I was going <laughs> to use it as a zinger for you. <laughs> Fuck out of here. It, here's the thing like, Daka Daka, 
one of the things I hate is when people abbreviate shit and I don't know what the fuck they're talking yeah. about. Like, yeah. like um, a DACA, you hover over it and it would tell you what the fuck they're talking there about. There was one for years people talked about, well, I did the, I did math hammer on this and it's 0.36% against MC or uh, MEs, marine, like, marine equivalents. Yeah. I had no idea. I don't even know if it's a thing anymore. But I remember reading that like, fuck off, dude. Like, just say Space Marines. Like, because there is no equivalence. Necrons may have the same stat line, but they're not equivalent. But all the shorthand. Um, well, I've got um, I've got a unit of meat shields with flashlights. I mean, what, what, do they have flashlights. flashlights? Yeah. Flashlights? And then you, you read the codex entry for what a LAS rifle is, and it sounds awesome, like a death killing machine. <laughs> they have flashlights. Flashlights. Uh, all that kind of shit. I hate all of it. There's so many more up Smurfs. Uh, yep. <laughs> Oh, you play Smurfs? Yeah, and you look like Gargamel. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> That's what I want to say. Don't make that a thing. I hate when people try to make a thing that you I know, change. it sucks. And so now, I mean, I, on the meme subject, so that, my, my rant about nicknames is, is old because it's been around forever. But on the meme subject, that's a social media thing. Memes yep. weren't around before social media. Um, why, can you, someone tell me why Tau is the joke? Like, I, I don't. I they're don't. The, they have a unique aesthetic amongst the entire Grimdark. They're the least Grimdark looking, and they look kind of like anime. So there's kind of like that weeb make fun yeah. of. Like, okay. It, it's just a weird. Like, <laughs> next year, tell me you play Tau. Like, oh, yeah, it's shit. like, oh, Tau, you deserve to. Your parents must be ashamed. I'm like, right. that's harsh. <laughs> Right, you just harsh. Play, yeah. Oh, you play Tau? Hope you get in a fucking car accident. Like, whoa! You have Tau? I hope you <laughs> die of cancer. Whoa! Know, fuck. <laughs> At least let me get my Overwatch off before. Yeah, it's like they're fine. There's nothing wrong with Tau. It's fine. With the rail guns before you fucking shit on my family. <laughs> I didn't. I don't get. I want it. a clip of a Byron saying, "There's nothing wrong with Tau." <laughs> so <laughs> you should be out of shirt with my face. Mike, thanks for bringing that up. You guys don't know this yet, and it's it's a little bit of. Uh, uh, inception of sorts because there's people watching this will already know the Blitzball episode is up but the clip I use for Blitzball is fantastic it's like four seconds long and it's all beer on and it's great okay so you're gonna love the clip on this one all right so yeah uh it's the player base but in a weird way the the worst of the worst players of 40k make me love it a little bit more because they're so bad that they're good Maybe to make fun like, of. Is that rooting for the bad guy in a movie? Is that kind yeah? Of it reminds me of uh, the movie Devil Wears Prada, one of my favorite movies. Never saw it. Where no. the 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 bad guy is the the editor in chief of the fashion magazine, played by what's her face? Jennifer Lopez. No, no. great actress of all time. Anyway, Devil, uh, Dingo stole my baby. Yes. And I saw her as the good guy and her hipster friends, the bad guy. So I always root for the bad guy. Okay. Well, I think um, there's probably varying levels of people that we hate to play this game. I don't think you're going to take all of their sides, Biron. No, no. But as long as I don't have to play them and can observe them from afar, I'm good. You know what's great about that person, though? So if you're at a, like, playing at Grognard, you got to have – some super villains. Like if you're a civilian on the street and there's superheroes, not Mike is close because Mike will play anybody, but you're not happy about it. I'm talking about somebody who will play anybody and is happy about it. You know, like a, somebody who works at a store and wants to sell models, but they have a fake happiness. If those are the superheroes and those dirtbag super villains, you're a civilian on the street that's just thankful somebody else is handling that. Yes. I'll observe it from far, ducking behind the bank. Right. You, <laughs> like, you and, like, someone you're next to, like, I thought you were a bad guy. I thought you were a good guy. No, no, no. We're just kind of normal. Those are the ones, and they'll just kind of fight it out. So we got to have those players like, make me feel like a normie. Right. And it's a good feeling to have. Yeah. It makes you feel proud that um, you've kissed a girl once. Yep. It makes you feel proud that you have a, a normal job. It makes you feel proud that you're, you don't smell. Like there's these things that you get when you witness these, uh, you know, super villains of 40K um, that you're like, you know what? I got a pretty good life. You know what? At least I'm not that guy. Right. I, 
<laughs> bought deodorant and wear it as normal day to day. And I didn't just buy it to use it to make a land speeder. Right. <laughs> You know, I can honestly say I've never been asked by a game store owner, owner to leave because I smelled. Yeah. It's, it's kind of cool. You know, it's a badge of honor. Um, <laughs> and Todd's probably kicked out people, right? Uh, he kicked out know. a guy for sleeping once. Yes. Yeah. But never someone who's actually spending money. I think you yeah. can smell like dog shit <laughs> if you're spending money. To- <laughs> How's that explain the role players in there, though? Yeah. Lift, like, yeah, not, bring spending, their, yeah. not spending money them. bringing pizza in and a seat like, full of three liters. Like, oh, oh, God. It flies around him. It's like, oh, you're here for the pre-order. Up front, sir. Okay. Yes. Oh, you want to buy some single magic cards? Yes. All right. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. Yeah, obviously, obvious con on that one. Anything else from your list, Piran? Nope. Okay. Um, the, this is the moment people are waiting for. Not the rating. We're not there yet. Extreme. <laughs> We'll have the floor. This is a guy who um, wanted to get into 40K several times. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to intro you for people who don't know you. Uh, tried to do orcs a couple times. Uh, Harlequins. Tried to do um, sisters. sisters. Sisters, yep. Cut myself right through. Stream, uh, you know, was the recipient of eventually of those sisters. And um, never really worked out. We played in a tournament where we probably got our asses kicked, feel like we don't, didn't know the rules. People were also fast playing us where they, you know, they know our army, they don't know theirs and they don't want to talk about it. So it's not all, you know, but then these things happen. And then eventually it's like, you know what? It's not right for me. Is that a, a summary of your story? Um, a brief summary, sure. Uh, okay. I do have like my, I want to save my final nail in the coffin story for my rating. Um, but I have my pros and cons. Um, really, beer on fun. What? Beer on doesn't give a fuck. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that fucker, he didn't even say, like, at least Mike says, I got a shit. Beer on <laughs> walks away when Brian, when Extreme starts talking. It's all right. I got diabetes and I got to pee. <laughs> then let's, let's fucking cut this time. Extreme. Yes. Pros. Uh, I think... S- a lot of this stuff you guys have already covered, but um, some of you listed some of my pros as cons and cons as pros. Mm. So some of my pros, um, a player base. No matter where you are, if you move somewhere else, you're always going to be able to find people that play 40K. You can't say that about a lot of other games. You can go into a game store. People are going to be playing it. You may not like them, whatever. It's somebody to play with. Your stuff's not going to collect dust on the shelf. That happens to you all the time, right? Because you will go into a store with a game and – it doesn't get traction, but you always see 40K going on. The problem with a lot of the games I like is somehow I'm drawn to games that I know in advance no one's going to be playing, and then I buy into it anyway like an idiot. This is a I don't guy who it. likes bands you've never heard of. Um, oh, what's your favorite movie? Uh, you, it's, it's a foreign film. You've never heard of it. Like, it's in black and white, Right. even though it was shot yesterday. Um, I, I, like, yeah, are you a fan of uh, Kurosawa? How many have you seen? Like, whoa, like I just saw one and that was it. But unlike those guys that you're talking about, I don't think it's cool. I just think it's sad that I'm sitting at home by myself with a game that no one's playing. Oh, maybe. So, I, I, it's a valid point. So players, I think, is a uh, pro. Uh, the lore, the background, how deep it is. I don't think there's any other game that is as deep or ex- as expansive as the 40k lore and background and i think that's a big pro um another pro go walking into any store they're most more likely to have 40k stuff sitting on the shelf to sell than any other game um so you're going to be able to go in there and buy stuff for your yeah I, i'd agree with that and also if there's new releases you don't have to say hey are you going to get xyz they'll get it yeah yep. if they're out it means they're sold out not that they never ordered it yeah, most of the time. And those are my pros. And my cons are um, everything else about this game. <laughs> um, I no, matter the rules, like, no matter the rules, everything else? Uh, I, pretty much. I don't okay. like the individual weapon loadouts and customizations on models. I would be much happier if it was you get this unit and you can add in 
a leader or you can add in a standard bearer that's your customization like doing all individual weapons and stuff it just isn't for me um i hate the roll to hit roll to wound roll to save because i feel like it's buckets of dice that do nothing in the end like if it was buckets of dice that at the end of that attack something happened i'd feel a lot better about it that's a that's a common theme for you though right yeah Brian. you well you've said that before and it's weird because I like that because that means that's three different spots where we can do stuff to the rules to tweak armies. That's, I mean, if you had one role to do everything, you don't have any, any room for 20 factions to do shit. But you, you guys can, dead, get them off the table next. Right. Yeah. Next. Well, you, can, you can factor a lot of that stuff into two rules. Though. You can do to hit to wound and have statistics affect those two roles enough. To make yeah, I've seen sure. I, I don't want to try to d debate it. You're, it's a valid point, and you've said it before on things. So you like more dice economy. Yeah. Um, but along with that, a little pet peeve, you succeed on your two wound roll, but the player is not wound or the model's not wounded. Like what the fuck? Like you told me to roll my two wound roll. I succeeded to wound you, and now oh I have a save. Well this weapon cancels out armor. So I have an invul save. Oh well, this cancels out. And oh, I'm behind. Feel the smoke no pain. Well, point of order. Look out, sir. sir. Hey, you know in Blood Bowl, you know how you love Blood Bowl so much. Still, um, when you throw an interception or you roll for interception before you roll the pass, well, it's just for the game reasons. It shouldn't be called the wound roll. You're right, but it has been for 25 years because you're not actually wounded. It's the second roll in a series of things. So if you're arguing the name of wound, I will not allow that point. Why not? <laughs> you can allow it or not allow it. It doesn't matter. All right. So my other. It's like you're not wounded. It's like saying, uh, you know, I don't know, like a death roll. Well, you're not dead. Like I just, it's, it's just a word. No, you're, a you're making my point for me though. If it was a roll to kill, and then I was like, well, hold on, before you kill me, I have a save roll. Oh, so what I should it be called? So I, so let's just let's play it out. Um, I hit you with my gun. What's the next roll called that happens before you roll your armor save? What should it be called? My argument would be get rid of saves. Mm. Yeah. To hit, to wound, done. Yeah, that's not going to fly. There's, <laughs> no, it's not going to fly. That's what no, I'm because armor is such a big part of 40K. Every army has certain armors, and I just don't, I don't see saves going away ever. So I have two other huge pet peeves. So one of the things that 40K has taught me a lot, it has pointed out a lot of the things I hate about games. And I've been able to take that going forward. So when I see a new game, I'm like, all right, does it do this? Does it do this? Does it do this? Because those are the things I've learned from 40K that I don't like. And so one of the other ones, random charges. I can't stand random charges. Uh, why do I know how far I can run, but I don't know how far I can charge? Oh, I got tired after two inches. Whew. Well, I, I like randomness in a game. I, I like the Age of Sigmar way. We don't know who's going to get the next turn. You know? I, I, don't, I, don't, in, um, I think old 40K, um, there was not random, but it was no pre-measuring, if I remember correctly. So you had to go, hmm, I think I can make it. I think that was a roll. Is there, was there still a roll back then, Mike? I don't remember. Like I old, old. I don't remember. I don't think. I don't think. I think it was I double the movement or something. I try to forget. I used to be really bad about this. I used to remember old rules all the time. I try now to like memory wipe old rules uh, when I read new ones. It's I just. But I think it was a little more on that side of things. But um, you know, so kill team does instead of moving, you move and d six right for a charge in the movement phase. 40k you get to move and then in the charge phase roll 2d6 that is very random there are things that change that there's re-rolls there's all that kind of stuff but um yeah fair point if you don't like the random movement you know the thing about like a fixed charge range is it becomes more mathy to me whereas someone like i can make it oh press yeah. my luck so mike when we played warhammer fantasy it was fixed charge range correct no not in uh not in eighth it was the 2d6. It was. Yeah. I'm trying to think what game I played. Kings of War. Kings of War. Oh, Kings of War. Okay. Where um, everybody was afraid to do anything. 
because we were like – Yeah, you're all like, I'm not going to get within your charge range. You're like, not yeah, we was like nobody had the balls to make the first move. So it was, I'm stating right now I am at 11 and your charge is 10. I'm stating that for the record. Like, don't state shit. I want to roll dice and get an 11 and beat your ass. Mm -hmm. uh, so Kings of War had that and it annoyed me. And it, it annoyed me because that made it so smarter people could always beat me. No, I don't even – I, I don't allow that point either because we're not dumb. It's not about smarter people. It's about you're afraid to do something because you pre-measured. Like, and I want to get this game over with, so I just say no, – no. I want someone to get their ass kicked, me or you. I don't want to wait till turn five to fight. I don't – that that drove me nuts in Kings of War. I was trying to remember what it what, what, what game it was. That was just Everyone like, was hovering at that – Back well, range distance for two. You know long. what they did? So in a movement phase, instead of moving your guys up, you actually moved them the other like you measured from the guys. Well, like, like it's like doing a maze backward. They measured from the other guy to say, oh, "I'm just, I'm at ten and a half." Like, well, come on, man. You moved you moved an inch this turn. Why? Just let's fight. Someone's gonna get the fucking charge. Like, so anyway, sorry, extreme. We went to debate again. So I've played other games with fixed charge length, and you do have to pay attention to threat ranges and stuff like that. Um, but if you have another side of the game that I think Kings of War lacks in a little bit is playing um, missions, scenarios, whatever you want to call them, that force you to be in the middle of the table, it fixes that problem. Because now you can't just sit out like you have to move into there. You, it forces the action. So that's I don't think Kings of War has dealt with that issue. Uh, the the new missions are you need to get forward. They really it, it favors armies that can move, but that's reality. So yeah, missions can definitely change the game. That's a good point. Yeah. <sighs> so the other con was fixed editions ago, and that's pre measuring. Like I I don't think I'll ever play a game again that doesn't allow pre measuring. I agree with that. No Necromunda for you. Fine with I it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a game within a game, and it, people, some people don't want that. So, yeah. Last it's game I it. played, it was a Battlefleet Gothic. There was one weapon, um, a Nova Cannon, that you had to guess range. I, I mean, I remember playing it like, with mortars all the time, guessing. Oh, range. yeah. yeah. And, um, we got pretty damn good at it. We got like, within an inch a lot, just because it was just, yeah. you start to see. Did you hold up the whippy stick and go like this? No, I should have. I should have did that. Or oh, that, like my, my arm, thing, my yeah. arm is yeah. 18. Um, this is six. This is 18. Um, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Sorry. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, it's kind of funny that the, the guest range thing, because if you go into the, like we talked about in the Blood Bowl episode, what would really happen? Right. You wouldn't always know all of that. But then again, 8th edition has a tank that can fire 360. How the fuck does that happen? How does that flyer fire everything 360 and direction doesn't matter? So we've already taken enough liberties to say, well, we're not doing a simulation any longer because we want to get out of here before midnight. So with that, I am for pre-measuring because it, it's, it's another one of those things to make the game run smoother. Yeah. I will say a lot of the issues... Are at, or that you have a 40k are dealt with in apocalypse far yeah. more limit the, the you uh the you you have a, a unit you get this and that's pretty much it none of these weird special weapon stuff he's got a plasma pistol uh yeah i read those rules i didn't i haven't played yet but um it reminds me a little bit of epic rules oh yeah oh yeah very much so you know, where and it's like I, it's like we're, we're managing the battle as opposed to being in uh, like almost uh, not micromanaging the battle yeah if you want to say you know we joke about who wants to be a general i think the games that are like apocalypse and epic are more i'm a general and games like 40k are more i'm, I'm a commander i'm a yeah, I'm, commander I, i'm in the i'm in the fucking battle like i need to, everything you do matters you lose a tank it's the end of the world you lose a tank in apocalypse it's like okay that's fine that's like, a rotting error we lost that flank anyway. Doesn't matter. Like that doesn't happen in 40k. You don't. So that's a good point. Apocalypse probably. But, but I think like Mike and I know Ryan feels this way too. Uh, Ryan Cross, who we play with, um, if they would have used some of the apocalypse rules for ninth, we'd be happier. 
I think they want to keep Apocalypse as it, as it is, though. Yeah. Because yeah. they're not changing that. That is a game. Well, Kill yeah. And, well, they're, they're abandoning it, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's – there will never be any new Apocalypse stuff coming out, so. Well, what do you want new? Because there's, there's – the, what, what would you come out with for Apocalypse? It's just rules and, and units. But are they going to release but, unit rules for all the new stuff? They're going to put data cards online. They already do. Do they? Have they yeah, updated? I think they have sisters now, I think, because they didn't have, they didn't have cards for them. I think. I could be wrong. Uh, I, I don't think they've abandoned Apocalypse. I think, I think they're, they're half-assing it at best. I, oh, think, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they never abandon anything, but, you well, know. Well, I, I don't know. I think. They're not support. But anyways, I, I yeah. They yeah. would love it if you, play, if you bought 5,000 points worth of any army and played it. They would oh, love yeah. that. Um, I think they're going to keep coming out with data cards, but it's it's an it's a it's a it's a, a side game. If you it's know. a side game, it you really don't is. get into apocalypse. No, you yeah, don't you buy don't. models. Right, you, it's you apocalypse. Forty k, and if you've got enough into it, you could play. Well, apocalypse. apocalypse is the reason to use everything. Mm -hmm. As opposed to forty k, I got five thousand points, but I never use these guys. <laughs> apocalypse is the reason for. Everything. I will never play the seven great unclean ones I have in forty k. <laughs> but I will in Apocalypse. There you go. Do you think there could be some kind of using the those rules with like epic models or something to have like the smaller scale? And yeah, that's what, um, so Dean's probably watching this. So that, I mentioned him playing with his buddy that played 40K. They don't really play 40K anymore. They've, they've stopped a bit addition. He might dabble like if I force him to try a game, but they basically they play their own homebrew version of Epic. Yeah. And, um, I told him, I go, you should, I go, you, you should like put it out there. I, I joke with them if, if our, our game company ever became a thing, it's obviously not like, it'd be like we should release that as a downloadable, but it's like, that's all it was, was that style of epic gameplay where you could play a huge battle because you're playing six millimeter. Oh, I, I loved epic. So yeah, I, I had an army, but never got to play much. Um, I had an elder army I just, and an and space marine army. I just, yeah. You know, people I play with didn't want to play 40k, so um, it has its merits. I mean, there's a lot to it, but I think Apocalypse will scratch that itch, and then everybody's happy because now you have a simple, simpler way to play a, a, a miniature battle game. GW loves it because that means somebody spent some money. They love that. You know, there's, there's Titans on the table. Holy shit! You know, you wouldn't see that a lot in 40k. So it's. I think Apocalypse will be around. I don't think it will be pushed. But I think, I think the rules will be mail order for a long time. I don't think it's going to go away. I, I could be wrong. I mean, yeah. I think they want you to play it because it, it'll never hurt 40K. Because if you say our group only plays Apocalypse, that means you already bought oh, enough God. stuff to play 40K over and over again. I think it's almost like uh, you've graduated. So like, all right, you, you've got a pass, sir. You've got a Titan, a fucking Bane Blade. You've got everything. You've got a pass. So, anyway, extreme. Back to your your list. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. I mean, I don't know. It's okay. It's not for everybody. Forty K is not for everybody. It gets and so many new players in that it it has people that leave every edition. So it's always they're always out there. And it's not, I mean, I gave it an honest try multiple times and spent a lot of money building armies and I really wanted to like the game. So it's not like I, I'm coming into this and be like, oh, I hate it because I had a bad experience with this one game. Like, no, I, I put some effort in. I played a lot of different people in different groups and it's just not Extreme, for me. Honest question. If you were my neighbor and we played 40K, I got you to play 40K every week. Would you, do you think you would enjoy it? I don't think so. What if it? What if I was your neighbor, not JP? Would you enjoy it? <laughs> um, probably not. I mean, I really would like want to like the idea of Kill Team and Necromunda and stuff, but even then, it's like that same those same mechanics keep coming up and kind of spoil it. And you know what? It makes what you're saying all makes sense about you because this is why you talked about Warcry the way you did. I mean, it's you know. But fair point. Th these games follow the GW formula. Yes, it's different than other editions, but by and large, same stat line, same, you know, roll to hit, roll to wound, 
armor save, invulnerable, oh, I got to uh, feel no pain, whatever. It, it follows the same format. So if you don't like that format, you, know, you won't like the game. Now, the only thing I could say is if you love lo the lore of the game, you might push yourself to like the game against certain opponents. That was what I was getting at. But I don't think you're that in love with the lore to care that much. Um, well, the big thing that stops me there is I don't care at all about Space Marines. I and mean, that's such a huge part of the lore that, I mean, I really liked, I've really liked building my armies and the way I wanted, like the orc armies I did with like the Speed Freak stuff was really cool. And then when I was building the Mega Knob army, I was really into that. But um, yeah. Fair enough. Know. Are we ready for some ratings? Yeah. So. All right. JP, I think you're going to be first. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, 25 years, you know. Yeah. I don't know. No, no biggie. There's a, it's like we've done everything in the bedroom. You know what I mean? Everything. It's been done. There's nothing new. Um, except the coherency rules. That's pretty, that was actually, that was, that was like a shocker. Like I wasn't expecting, whoa. Coherency <laughs> rules, nine editions. Uh, for me, I'm going to give it a four, even. Uh, as much as I wanted to go 4.5, I remember playing in tournaments, being miserable. I remember seeing some of the people this game drags in. I remember seeing shit online. Was, I just was like, fuck, come on. Um, but the memories I have and the memories I'm going to make and the fact that I, I love the armies and the lore and everything, and the game is fine. I mean, I'm fine with the gameplay. Uh, four is a good rating for me. Um, can't go lower than it. There's no way I can go lower than it because of how much this game has meant to me in the whole. When I say it's a four, it's not a four for the game. This is a four for everything. This is 40K is a giant box of stuff. And the game is one of the things in that box. All right. Next up, probably Mike. Or maybe Biron? I don't know. Go Mike. Go Mike. Dude, I'll dude, give it a four. Age. I'll, I will also give it a four. Uh, I like the idea of playing it more than playing it. So I like talking about it. I've spent a lot of time the past few months painting a shit ton of Death Guard and nerdly stuff. But yeah, but <laughs> again, I like reading the rules. I like the lore. The stories, yeah, pretty much it's, 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 the I, I, things aside from the actual gameplay. Right, like the game's fun, but here's the thing: from and it's, it's we have the same rating, and we have the same cumulative as well now as yep. continuing that. Um, but like, I can't go into any store and have a good time against the person playing 40k. I, it's probably won't happen. Not gotta, only that, you, the chances are you'd have a miserable time. Right, I got to cultivate a club. That goes with our club episode. If you haven't seen that one, look that one up because it kind of goes with this in my opinion. Chow. But chow. Right. Well then, pa -chow, pa -chow, pa -chow. It's not going to fucking matter. We're not going to have the boxes. So what the fuck? It doesn't matter. Pa -chow. What up? Pa -chow. Whatever. 40K, I need to cultivate a club. And due to that, I, I would love to give it a four or five. And Mike, probably the same. I could probably speak for him on the same one. If we can walk in and have a great game against somebody, it's a four or five easy. But it is not possible to do that shit with this game you just can't all right um over to byron marlin barando as a game i give it a three as a hobby i give it a four to split the difference i give it a 3.5 fair enough i actually expected that score yeah any uh, any, uh, uh extra on this one it's it's like, I almost want to give it a four anyway, because it's the game I think about the most. Right. That's, that was my struggle. Do you know what? I will tell you. This is, this is the... You know what? Uh, Fuck it. It gets a four. It gets boom. a four. Extreme. Eraser. No. <laughs> it gets a four because I think about it. I watch videos on tactics, even though I don't give a shit about tactics. Right. I mean... Oh. So, it's a four. On, on the mind. Emperor's Bible. Like, I was thinking about the rating this entire episode. I didn't know I was going to do four. I went I had between, a 3.5. I, I went between 3.5 and 4.5 throughout this whole episode. Because I was like, I, I, I don't know yet. 
And I really wanted to give it four or five because like you said, Miran, look what's on my wall. Look what I think about. Look at the books on my fucking shelf. Like that's yeah. 40K. I mean, how do I not? So on pure dollars alone. I just can't. There's no way I could ever go lower than a four. And like I said previously, it's a game I'll, I want to play right now against you guys. It's just four or five though. To me, that's elite level. That's four a word to get for things that it doesn't deserve. Yeah, four or five. Extreme's got an elite shirt on. He's the one that knows exactly. what I'm talking about. Be elite. <laughs> um, four or five, I can go into a shop and get a good and get a game and have a fun time. This ain't that. There's a lot, a lot of work that for me that goes into making sure I have fun with 40k. So four 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 extreme. Over to you and your big fucking two five. <laughs> um what is this? What is going on down here? Uh, so <laughs> is that your the story, the story I was saving for my score here, we tried to put together, or I don't know if you attempted to put together like the perfect 40 K game for me that I would like, I got all my orc bikers. I was playing on a team with you with all your orc bikers. We're playing oh, against at Adepticon, other right? Huh? At Adepticon, we yes. teamed up. Yeah. Yep. So there is. Nice. That one. Oh, <laughs> Uh, oh my guys that was it oh my guys have stubborn oh my god i got uh three adeptus custodians oh god who wants to play me all my guys have stubborn no one will play me in open gaming like yeah wonder why (laughs) extreme we teamed up orc bikes with orc bikes teamed up against biron and ryan Ryan? yeah Mm -hmm. and you guys had imperial guard uh, Ryan had his ad mech, and I think I had Gene Stealers. Well, why did that guy say guard Because mechs? I was, because Gene Stealers, half of them are in guard guys that are in disguise. Is that also, he, was, he wasn't even right? Right, he wasn't even right. He goes, guard. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. That alone made it a great game, because we so remember that guy. Yeah, fuck. I love that I remember the guard nice, but I don't even remember he was wrong. It wasn't even the right fucking army. So what happened in that game, Extreme, the, the, the perfect game? So it should have been the perfect game, right? I'm playing. It, it looks cool. It's what I want. Just orc bikes everywhere going against other people. Everyone involved is cool. A turn and a half, two turns into the game, I was already just like, all right, how do we make this over quicker? Because I've already been triggered by everything on my cons list at that point. Like, I don't understand why this is fun. I'm just... I, I think part of it, and I, and I want to I want to take the word "perfect game" away because if it was truly the perfect scenario, we wouldn't have played in open gaming at the, in that environment. It would have been in like the old days in your garage, couple of beers, couple of dudes talking about women. You know what I mean? Just a different environment. We wouldn't Not, be playing on tempera coated tables. Yeah, we would be like <laughs> you know dicks out. You know what I mean? Not at Adepticon. Like, oh my god, it's crowded as fuck. You're probably nervous because there's people watching. You're gonna make a wrong move. That's not really the perfect environment, but it was an attempt at it. No, that's fine. We tried to make it work. We tried to reconcile. Extreme. If you're ever my neighbor, you are gonna play. So whatever the fuck you say, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, if, if I'm your neighbor, I would like to work with you on creating a new game using 40k models. I'm, I'm out of the game design, design business, and you Let's missed your shot. Let's call it You you missed your shot at game design a couple of years ago. I'm out of the business now. Yeah, but then you guys would demo it at Adepticon, and they go, Brian, you want to play? No. Knuckle duster, please. <laughs> Extreme. Um, any, any other um, uh, mildly. Uh, negative anecdotes you want to share about the game. Why do you the only negative. fight Brian on his reviews? Is it because they disagree with yours or because you like to give Brian shit? Yes. I think, yes. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think yes to all, but I think Mike, Mike and I have had this, like similar things. Yep. There's nothing to argue about there. Biron only shit on Blood Bowl. Otherwise, you've been pretty, <laughs> pretty close, yeah. I mean, you know, dude, you're being, being very undued. Biron is very un in his rankings. He's actually tough but fair mm-hmm. extreme is the only one who really has a like a like a, a kick to the balls approach to ratings outside of your blood bowl rating don't get me wrong you on you you knew what you were doing there 
Oh, I knew. Yeah, it was pre play It was premeditated. First degree. <laughs> A first degree one slurp is what that was. I, I think that what's really kind of sucks is I think that there's some games, and this is one of them, that in extremes eyes will never get a fair shake because of the environment that it is played in. Would you say that 40K is to Brian as Blood Bowl is to Beer Ann? I think so. That was on the SAT. <laughs> I'm just testing my, my cognitive scores or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah probably. Um, because it's got the similar approach to, I've tried, it's not there. Um, but then again, I mean, what I said about Extreme not getting a real good shake at it, Biron, if I knew you in 2006 and you played in my league, I bet you you would have fun. Because everybody I would know any better, yeah. Everybody did. Would, if no. not for getting pizza, pizza delivered on Blood Bowl night, I mean, mm -hmm. that alone is already fun. Um, I mean, it's just... Yeah. It's, it's tough. These, these are, like you said one day, this was not, we're not professional reviewers, we're not critics. We're based on our own experience and our own uh, approach to it. So Pure bias. That's what I'm all about. There's no, there's, you can't be unbiased with it. Let's all hold up what we think Brian's going to give it, and then he can <laughs> say it. How about that? I actually, it was weird. I actually thought he was going to, he said it already. I think I assumed one. No. Right, so let's, um, I'm going to go. I have it written down, so I won't cheat. Well, all I right. trust you anyway. You're Wholesome. Let's go with uh, one way. Shit. Well, Damn. while everyone's getting that together, I have I one have more a point. Okay. So a uh, positive for my rating is the new sisters models yep. are finally out. They look cool. Yep. But like I've mentioned in the past, I don't enjoy modern Games Workshop models and the assembly process. So it's only like a minor bump up. Here's one I just put together here. So it was from the box set. Combi weapon, chain sword looking good now because it was in the main the big box set these were a little easier when you get the real kit it yeah will be, it'll be more they're more, more posable usually too though fair enough no what no the new models are not more posable no when they when they release separate regiment boxes they did that with the primaris where you're more customizable when they released the intercessors in a box by themselves no so i think what what you're i think you're on the, he's saying posable like it's like you, like you have freedom. What he means is the bolters here or here. Yeah, or there or there. He doesn't. Not push mean, he doesn't mean you can make the arm go like this and have a grenade over here. It means you can put a little pouch on the back. Right. There, there's, <laughs> there's more pieces. It's not really more posable. Which, when you look at the original Space Marine or the original hard plastic Space Marines, sucked because there were 15 pieces per model. Yeah. yeah. You know what I like though? After you finish with the sprue, you have half the sprue as extra bits. And you're some like, I'm going to save these for bits, and then you're like, No, I'm not, and you throw them away. <laughs> well, some I, I say, some may say like that's why they cost sixty bucks because you just paid for two units, you only get to make one. Kind of a scam. Sorry, um, you only got enough legs for one unit. Right, right. You got arms for everybody. All right, here's mine for uh, extreme. Seven. Oh, two point five. I know, yeah. 25. All right, Mike, what are you guessing for him? We said two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you all went too high. 1.5. Yes! Oh! Whoa! Oh, he didn't have the balls to do it. <laughs> you go to one? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've enjoyed the modeling experience with some 40K stuff, so I couldn't give it the absolute worst. But... Oh, that is so bad. <laughs> It's coming from a real place. <laughs> it really is. You don't. You don't. You don't wake up with a, at a one point five. You know what I mean? You don't start there. It came. That came from somewhere. Traumatization I mean, of some sort. I mean, I was uh, debating all day whether it was a one or a one point five. So I this ended up your, on the high end. This is your dick, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Shane. I'm only saying that because the one point five was disappointing. But you know what? Each has our own, all of our reviews are, are what they are. Uh, the cumulative score in this one is now 3.5. 3? 3? 0.5. Oh, it is 3.5? 3, 3, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's 3.375. 3.5. So, guess what, Extreme? Your plan didn't work as well as you thought it would. You gave <laughs> it about what I was going to grant it before I bumped it up half a point. It's still on the upper tier of games on our list. So, it's still better than Blood Bowl. <laughs> Well, 
like I said earlier, we're going to wrap up the 40K episode. Uh, if you stuck around this long, it's because you probably already like 40K. I don't think you watch this whole uh, shitstorm of an episode with all the, the power off and all this stuff. You didn't stick through it all if you hate 40K. No. You might have actually been hobbying and listening in the background and That's didn't true. notice. Yeah. And then every now and then you look up, like, who's the guy that doesn't like it again? Yeah, I don't like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's the loud uh, guy? Again? No, that guy. So, uh, Slurpcast, if you like the show, subscribe. Get all episodes downloaded every Saturday at midnight. New episode. Uh, we've got Blood Bowl two weeks ago. We got Blitz Bowl last week. Probably going to do Famous Gaming Nerds next week. Um, and then another game the week after, I'm guessing. So, uh, always new content coming out every single week. It is great if you're hobbying, painting, modeling, or just in the background. Hey, if you're fucking, put us on in the background. Just a thought. I don't know. Uh, It'll help you last longer. Yeah, you don't have to watch us. Look at us, you know? There's one good-looking guy and three whatevers. You know what yeah. I mean? Let you decide who's who on that one. Uh, but just get the view. We want the view out of it. And a comment, subscribe, like, all that. Follow us on social media at Slurpcast. There's a Facebook group, Slurpcast Discussion. Jump in on that one. There's a recent post on there by the Centaur. And where does this dick go? Like, is it, you know front or the back you can you can chime in on that one uh, i think there's also a poll up there about do you like blood bowl or blitz bowl or blots bowl which is made up but then i found something when i searched blots and it was actually a gaming thing so I was like, that's cool here i thought it was gonna be some weird fucking word uh so that's cool we want to talk to you guys you watch our show we want to interact with you as well um and lastly if you want to get some merch brand new shirts shower curtains what uh floor mat art pieces, whatever you want, get the brand new Death Path variants of all of us on there, exclusive with Biron and the Big Forum. You might think it's masturbation strength. It's actually because he uh, curls burritos. That's where that comes from, okay? It's not anything else, okay? Stream is an exterminator. Um, we're all out there. Mike is a pustule, uh, like, like when your guy walks, Mike, it's kind of like <laughs> <laughs> I kind of the sound it makes. It's like wearing shorts on, 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 at a booth. You know what I mean? You get up. off like a, like a fruit roll up. Good sound. So, as for me, Johnny P, and Extreme, probably there. Biron's probably there. And Mike's probably there. Um, where's Lurpcast? And it's time to leave. It's, it's beyond time to leave. Bye. Brought to you by Zombie. Eat flesh.